Hi friends! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Ace of Tarot and in today's pick a card reading we are going to be looking at your soulmate or soulmates. As you can see we have four piles today. We are going to go super in depth. I'm going to get a lot of signs and a lot of important messages. I'm not going to make this the most structured reading ever because I want to give spirit the opportunity to relay the messages that you need to hear most but I am really excited to get into it. Uh, we're going to try to get as much detail as possible and I'm going to channel messages messages from this soulmate so even if you don't know them yet this will be from their higher self and kind of what they want you to know but we have four piles today we have pile one pile two pile three and pile four go ahead and pause the video if you need to to decide which pile you feel most drawn to if you need to meditate on the cards use a pendulum whatever it may be you can be attracted to a pile based upon the bag or the card it doesn't really matter if you're drawn to more than one pile that's absolutely okay it's likely maybe spirit wants you to know about multiple soulmate connections um i will put a disclaimer that i am focusing this around romantic soulmate connections but it's not exclusive to that so if you feel like this sounds like somebody in your life that you know platonically then the spirit's probably just telling you about the platonic nature of this soulmate connection so do what works for you and always use your discernment but uh i am going to stop rambling and we're going to get into it because i am really excited so once you have picked your pile or piles go ahead and scroll down to the description box or the comment section and we will get into your reading Hi there, Pile One. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you guys chose the first card and this bag of Oracle cards and charms, this is going to be your reading. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna look at the overall nature of this soulmate connection. And then I'm going to use tarot cards to look at how you met or will meet, how um, a we'll look at, what this person is like and what they'll be like in your connection and then we'll look at how they perceive you and their perception of you and then we'll look at your soul contract and then we're going to get messages from them if you don't know this soulmate yet it's going to be from their higher self and then to finish off we will get some advice for you guys and whatever I might feel called to do. I really want to get a ton of information and I'm so excited to get into it so I'm going to stop blabbing and we are going to look at your very first oracle card, which is going to represent the overall nature of this connection. And your oracle card is the sage. And so what this is really telling me right off the bat is that this is the type of connection that is going to broaden your perspective on the world. It is going to really bring out your higher self. It is going to test you in ways that you've never been tested before. And by that, I mean that this soulmate connection is going to give you not only the confidence to do things that maybe you wouldn't necessarily do on your own, but also the motivation to be more than you are currently or than you were before when you met this person. I One thing I'm really seeing here is a lot of selfless dedication to one another and really kind acts of service. So I can see you both being willing to sacrifice things or sacrifice um, personal wants in order to help the other. And I'm not even talking about like big things. I'm just talking about like, you know, small things. Like if somebody like let's say your soulmate had plans to go hang with their friends or or do something and you wind up being sick. This is the type of person who would cancel that to take care of you, to be there for you. I feel like there's a lot of selfless dedication. The There's also protective energy. And I think that, that the both of you are, are going to be very psychically and intuitively connected but also are going to be really looking out for one another and this is this connection is definitely going to test um your psychic abilities and i don't even mean that in like a bad way like test them it's, it's just going to broaden them and i think that you're actually going to be really shocked at um at how much growth you experience with this person and how much um how much more you like the thing that I'm seeing in my head is like 
you were seeing black and white before you met this person and after you meet this person you're seeing in color finally it, it broadens your perspective in a way that you just could never imagine um for some reason the teeth are making me think of like a dentist or something um this person's smile could be really significant or um they could i mean they, they could be some kind of like doctor or something or like a dentist that that's not gonna resonate for everybody though but with the teeth i just think of wisdom and i think that that overall there's just gonna be a lot of invaluable wisdom that you gain from this connection and a lot of um overall understanding about yourself and about the world and about how much power you as an individual hold um so yeah this looks like a really strong connection so we're gonna look now at your oracle cards and the charms in here so these oracle cards can serve as signs um, the numbers could be significant or these could be describing aspects of the relationship i'm just gonna i'm gonna do, do a bunch of different interpretations and you know just just take what resonates but if you get messages that i don't say but you interpret please take those because you you need to trust your intuition first and foremost and and you'll know what messages are for you so the first card coming out is the fetus the second card is the iceberg the third card is time with the hourglass since i got roasted for calling it a sand timer and we also have number 80 the mushroom so the mushroom is definitely talking about how transformative this connection will be and how it will like the pace will be different for all of you but i do feel like it will be quicker than than most of you are thinking like in terms of how how quickly your relationship will develop um i think you're actually going to be pretty surprised at how how much growth you experience throughout this connection and, and like before this connection starts and later um at first, this connection might be difficult because you might be afraid of knowing if the other person feels the same way as you. But with this iceberg here, I feel like this is just talking about how there's a lot more that meets than meets like the surface. Like there's a lot underneath the surface, if that makes sense. And um, from a surface level standpoint, it might seem like there's not a whole lot here or maybe at first glance you might not recognize this person as a soulmate or something like that but what i'm seeing like right away is that there's going to be these deeper intuitive feelings like the moon is definitely big here and i think that it's going to this connection is going to kind of force both of you to start listening to what your inner truth is because you're not going to have a lot of context clues or um or you're not gonna have very much uh, of an external awareness of how this person feels about you. I feel like you both might be a little bit shy towards one another or may not may not be open to um, revealing much with one another. This could be somebody that you've known since childhood with the fetus or this could be somebody that you have children with. I could also see this as somebody where like when you meet them, it, it starts, <laughs> You're almost like a fetus, you're almost like a baby, like you were really young and, and you grow and you transform into this really, you transform into like your best self and like one of, into your truest self, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I wanna get your charms and I'm still gonna interpret this, but I wanna get your charms out there um, before I get too deep into it. But to start, we have this sleeping cat. We have the turtle, this cute little turtle guy. We have this circus, circus tent, a bushel of wheat. I kind of have to hold it down here because the lights are, my lights suck. We have this paw print. We have imaginative and the cancer charm. We have the drum set. We have Gemini and Intelligent. So you don't have to have these placements, but you could have these placements. We have the seashell and the letter V. So what I'm seeing here is that maybe this connection takes a long time to develop 
like into something more into something more romantic um, or maybe you have like a chance meeting when you're young and then you don't see them for a long time until you get older the the timing is important here because i think that there are significant things that need to happen for for both of you like before and during this connection like kind of what spirit is stressing to me is that you will meet this person at a very specific point in time and then the relationship will progress at a very specific point in time for various reasons um, there might be delays or blockages and those all have divine reasons behind them is kind of what i'm hearing one thing that i'm seeing here is that this person is going to once you're together they're going to be entirely devoted to you with this circus here this connection might be a bit chaotic at times or there might be misunderstandings or just chaos around the both of you but i think that that um this connection is going to help you learn how to to if you're a people pleaser to not people please and if you are um somebody who just finds themselves helping others and not helping yourself i think that this connection is going to teach you how to focus on yourself but i also think that this person is going to be very devoted to you like i was saying earlier you're going to be very devoted to them they're going to be very concerned about um, your happiness and i feel like they're going to kind of treat you like a ringleader in a circus like they're they're always going to be they're not going to have eyes for anyone but you and they're really just going to admire you and and just want to shower you with love but yeah with this turtle here this really makes me think of virgo energy and i do think it's possible that this this connection might be slow to start or slow to reach a point of being together or union but i also think that this is sturdy and once it is together it will you will stay together unless one of you decides otherwise but i think that this is the type of connection that's very strong and it might be a slow start and maybe there might be misunderstandings in the beginning because neither of you are, are reading underneath the surface and are just kind of looking for like regular clues to see if, if this person is into you is kind of like the vibe I'm getting. With this drum set here, I feel like there's going to be a lot of um, attraction, a lot of passion. This person is going to want to have your attention a lot or they're going to try to get your attention a lot. Um... I feel like they're, they're going to feel really good anytime they have your attention. And I think quality time could definitely be a love language. So if they start acting like really dramatic or just like, oh, like I need pile one. Like I simply can't survive without pile one. And not in like a codependent way, but just like a cute, like, oh, I just miss pile one kind of way. Yeah, I feel like they're going to they're gonna want a lot of your attention. And yeah, they, they are going to enjoy banging you. <laughs> um... The letter B, B could be significant or this could just talk about, you know, victory within the connection is kind of what I've heard. We also have this paw print and this cat. So I definitely think animals could be significant here. Maybe um, for some of you, you'll get an animal with this person or you did get an animal with this person. Um, maybe if this person has animals or you have animals, um, maybe your animals really like this person. So that could definitely be a sign. Um that that this is somebody that you should be with or like this is a good person to be with um but with the seashell and the cat the seashell always makes me think of the high priestess and i think that there maybe there's secrets in the beginning like you both really like one another and so you're you're kind of in that stage where you don't want to like be your authentic self because you're you're afraid they're not gonna like that um but i think the more you get to know this person the more you'll realize how similar you both are <laughs> with the mushrooms i hate i hate that i'm thinking about this but um you know you know mushrooms are are are, are, are aren't they fun guy and and i think whoever your soulmate is is gonna be a fun guy <laughs> and maybe they'll be really cold to you at first or maybe they'll i think if there's any coldness it's just out of fear because of the connection with this sleeping cat you know cats are very intuitive and so the vibe that i'm kind of getting is that you both might ignore your intuition about one another and, and about your feelings to one another and it might take you a long time to actually admit your feelings to one another because with this cat here i feel like you both are going to be sleeping on the intuitive feelings you have and i feel like spirit is saying it's going to take time for you both to feel ready to feel ready to be able to open up to one another so what you see on the surface for a while will not be will not even remotely 
cover the the insane feelings that you are both feeling about one another on the inside you know there's cancer and gemini energy so i definitely think there will be an intellectual connection here um as well as a very nurturing connection between one another like that protective motherly energy again not saying that that you're gonna act like their mother or they're gonna act like your mother i just think there's just gonna be this very nurturing energy between you definitely the possibility for you to have children with this person if that's something that you want or fur babies or plant babies um but i definitely think that there's just going to be this once the emotional bond is established it's going to be really hard to pull you two apart like you're just going to kind of just be molded back into like one weird soul thing and and you know you're going to just look out for one another and i think this is definitely a connection that stands the test of time and you know sage is a lot about clearing and clarifying and cleansing and i think that you know this connection is going to teach you a lot about what love truly is what unconditional love truly is and um what what being like a solid and committed partner is like and and i feel like this is the person that you are going to vibe harder with than anyone else in your entire life like you guys are on the same wavelength emotionally and intellectually and so you guys are just going to be whipping zingers out with one another like we'll have the best conversations and at the same time have this emotional connection to each other that i think is just honestly really precious and really sweet i feel like i can't even describe it in words but it's powerful it's really strong and it's something that the emotional understanding between the both of you is something that unlike anything you've ever felt with anyone else before and i think with this bushel of wheat it's as long as you give it time give this connection time to be nurtured it's going to grow into something very bountiful something worth harvesting and i think too you could also enter like business ventures with this person or you could just grow a life with them like i feel like you're you're going to plant seeds with this person and it's going to start as something small but over time like you might not see the impact of your actions or the work that you do with this person but that's all hidden and over time you're just going to see this this rapid transformation and and i feel like you're not even going to realize these this the transformation within you and in your life until you're able to look back and reflect like before you knew this person and what your life was like before so it's going to be kind of radical in the moment or it's going to be kind of like it's going to be radical in hindsight in the moment it's just going to feel natural and you're just going to be following the flow of your soul and like what your soul is calling you to do but then one day you're going to just be like with this person and you're going to be like thinking back to either before you knew them or before this connection like got together and you're going to be like wow holy shit like wow well, we really have grown and changed so much and it's very very beautiful so yeah the highly intuitive good homey energy i'm really liking this so i'm gonna move your charms kind of just up in this corner leave them there and we are going to look now at how you are going to meet this person so we'll just do that one first so how you're going to meet this person is represented by the moon so we have moon imagery again so this could be this could happen in a few different ways i'm thinking that if you haven't met this person yet the moon card is representing that this is going to be something that's like faded or something that you can't plan for. Like it's just going to happen. Um, you could meet, definitely meet this person at night, obviously with, with the moon here. <laughs> um, but I think you're going to be doing something like you're going to be with your friends or you could be alone. It, it's because because like honestly the, the vibe that i'm getting is that you're going to meet this person in just a very like a very weird way that is totally by chance and that could even be like joining an online group and then accidentally friend requesting this person it, it, it could happen in so many different ways but what's interesting is that we have this like iceberg imagery showing up again and so maybe when you first meet this person, it could be very surface level, but there's going to be something awakened within you. Like you could maybe meet this person out and about through mutual friends. You could meet this person um, at a bar. You could meet this person um, camping is something I just heard or planetarium even like there's there's a lot of different a lot of different possibilities here. 
And I think spirit's being kind of vague because this is something like, if you haven't met this person yet, they don't want you to plan everything around it. it you are going to meet this person when you are following the call of your soul is kind of kind of the idea that I, I'm getting here. But what I want to look at next is a card to describe this person and kind of their energy and how they're going to be towards you. So your person is being represented by the chariot. So we have more cancer energy here. And what I really love about this is that I feel like this is somebody who's very motivated and very driven. This is somebody who is able to be self-reflective and own up to the fact that, you know, they're not perfect. This is somebody who's able to come to peace with the fact that, that um, they have flaws and they have things that they need to work on. But they're also somebody who's motivated to be better and to do better. Like I said before, I definitely think they're going to be very nurturing towards you and they are going to really, um, really love holding you is like something that I'm getting. This is the type of person who loves planning for the future, who loves brainstorming about the future, who loves, they definitely always have a vision and they can be very creative. Um, we have Pisces and the chariot here. So I definitely think that water energy could be significant. Um, and it's kind of funny because I feel like this person might typically be very closed off. Like with that crab energy, like they have pinchers and they usually like to keep people away. But there's something about you that's going to be very disarming and very... Um, motivating to for them to want to be more open like this connection is really going to challenge the both of you in terms of of how you of how authentic you're able to be you're going to be able to be a lot more authentic with this person maybe not in the beginning but but over time you will be able you will know this know this person in a way that you've never known anybody else and same for them like this is going to be one of the clo closest connections you ever form in your life so this could very well be like your life partner or somebody that you spend most of your life with but i wanted to see how they perceive you or how they will perceive you and your card is represented by the devil so don't get upset by this <laughs> they're not going to think of you as this horrible awful person but you could be a Capricorn. Uh, the devil is Capricorn energy. But I think that what this actually talks about is this person might actually be avoidant towards you in the beginning. And that could kind of explain this iceberg energy. Like you might think that they're not into you originally or that there's there's not much there and you're just going to be confused why you feel this pull towards them. And it's because they feel this pull towards you they are going to view your connection as something incredibly magnetic. And I feel like once, either once they like actually meet you or get to be alone with you, or once you open up about your feelings to one another, they're gonna feel almost tethered to you and like this is a connection they can't escape. It's possible your eyes could be very um, striking or they could just really, they could just love your eyes. But one thing that I'm seeing is that you're going to be somebody who motivates them to overcome their demons, to overcome the things that they uh, feel like hold them back in life. And you're going to give them a lot of strength and they're going to feel tied to you in a way that they don't feel tied to anyone else. They're like, this is like a soul connection that they're they're going to kind of be okay with not breaking. They might get obsessive about you at times. And with this cancer energy, they might just get really lost in these different fantasies about you but one big thing is that they're going to work their ass off to like make sure that you and them have the best life possible and if you have like any family family members or end up having kids like they're going to want to create the best life for you and I think one thing that they're going to love about you is how hard you work and how you also try to overcome your shortcomings and try to be a better person and I think that at first when they meet you they're going to feel really thrown off balance like they might finally get their stride or, or find balance within themselves and maybe it's not when they meet you but when they reconnect with you like they might meet you and then that might fall you might they might fall off of balance because of that and then time might pass and then they come back together and they feel ready to face you but there's definitely you definitely um 
are a mirror in certain ways to this person where, where they'll see shortcomings within themselves and it might be triggering at first but this person is very strong and they'll actually come to accept these shortcomings and they'll be more comfortable with them over time and I think one really beautiful thing is that like you both are going to embody the darkness and the light and like one thing is for sure if this is not a platonic connection um y'all are gonna be having some kinky sex <laughs> like it's, it's gonna be kinky like I think that you guys are gonna have a really good time um but I also think you're going to have them wrapped around your finger in a really sweet way like they're gonna be really devoted to you and they're really gonna care a lot about you and they're just gonna want to fight for you and I think that the the bond that you two will have together will be very comforting in the sense that it will it will give you both the strength to face the darkness in yourselves and in the world and and make changes towards it i mean like this is a very ideal support system for two people who want to make a difference in the world and want to be better people in general and yeah it, it, it's really beautiful it's it's very beautiful so next we're gonna look at your soul contract and see what spirit will be willing to tell you about, you know, the agreement that, that you guys may have made before you incarnated. And we'll just see what spirit wants you to know about this relationship. So to start, we have the nine of swords. We have the king of cups. So yeah, this person could definitely be a water sign. Uh, we have the four of wands. And we have the devil again. So... Like I was saying before, you are definitely a catalyst for change in this person and you are a catalyst for overcoming demons and, and things that this person uh, might struggle with. You both have fears and you both probably will struggle with t some type of anxiety or feel a lot of anxiety. And I think that you both are going to serve as a rock for one another and really show each other how to... Or not show each other how but give one another the inspiration and the support that they need to be to face the world and and face those inner demons I feel like you both are going to find home in one another and you know this is the person that's going to be here to you know wipe your tears away when you're sad and and hold you when you're scared and like you're going to do the same for them there's a lot of emotional maturity here and I feel like you really are going to start like you might start as a page of cups when you meet this person and finish out as a king but with the king of cups being here there's definitely a lot of this is a real like the, like the, i i have a hard time seeing this as anything but a romantic soulmate i mean it could definitely be something otherwise but the romance messages are just really strong with the four of wands here you know this person it's very likely that you will either marry this person or have a very long-term relationship with this person the four of wands can often talk about you know weddings or celebrations and I think that this is somebody who's going to want to have a family with you. This is somebody who's going to want to overcome their demons with you and work hard to build a beautiful foundation. You know, this is like, it's, this is the type of relationship where it's okay to make mistakes because you both are going to be emotionally mature enough to see beyond that and, and be open to, okay, how can we work through these mistakes? How can we, how can we fix these things? How can we grow from these things and and the emotional maturity between the both of you and the understanding between the both of you is going to be really beautiful and one thing that I think is interesting is like I'm kind of getting that people will not see how romantic you both are in public it's going to be something that you guys kind of save for being at home and and being and being alone like that's where the, the real intimacy is going to shine like I feel like this is not a huge PDA type couple you could be but I think what the people are, are people are going to be able to feel the connection between you two but it's going to be interesting because it's not like you're going to be you know just making out all the time like on like a table like you guys are going to be very um calm cool collected about about one another in public but when y'all are alone it, it, it might get a little bit freaky deaky so um I think that, that here I mean this is a connection all about overcoming fears all about being a support system and helping one another move forward and and achieve goals and and experience life with each other this is life partner energy and this is somebody that you're tethered to somebody that 
that you just feel so strongly with and like this is like a, a love marriage this is a, like I don't know why I was thinking of like arranged marriages and then like love marriages like if this is somebody that you would marry because you love them and you feel tied to them and I think that the cool thing is that while you you will grow and you will experience new things and you will you know become a better person this is somebody that you can just get down and dirty and like have fun with and so I think that it's really not going to feel like intense soul growth because they're just going to be having such a good time with this person and like sometimes this person might put off like their responsibilities or things just because they want to spend more time with you so they might see you as the devil in that way where they're like oh like I, I have to do work but I just can't stay away from them but I think that you are going to have a very solid foundation that you create oh my god I can't stop burping um you're gonna have a very solid foundation that you both create and I think that you both are gonna feel very secure in this connection and and this kind of just makes me see that victory like I think if you get married to this person or when you get married to this person or if you both want that sort of thing it's gonna feel like once you're like married it's gonna be like okay my life is beginning like I feel like there's joint excitement about a, a life together and, and a and a shared vision and yeah this is just very very beautiful um and I think that if you you either know exactly who I'm talking about or you haven't met this person yet because I promise once you've met this person you will know so now what I'm going to do is I am going to use these cards to see what this person would say to you or what they want you to know. So if you haven't met this person yet, this is going to be messages from their higher self. But if you have met this person, this could be just things that they want to tell you or want to share with you or whatever. So the cards we have are the Ace of Wands. We have the Four of Swords. We have the High Sage, which is the High Priestess, so more Priestess energy here. We have the Eight of Wands and the Seven of Swords. Let me just make sure these are all in here. Yeah, dope. Okay, so what does this person want to tell you, Pile One? Well, the first thing they want to say is that the moment they met you, they felt the spark. And I think that, that their passion and attraction for you is something that just never goes away. If anything, it just becomes more intense over time. It definitely feels like the number eight is significant here. Um, we have 80 with a mushroom, which reduces to eight, and 53, which reduces to eight, and we have this eight of wands. And so I feel like this person is never, once you are together, if you're not together yet, this person is never going to stop showing you or taking action to show you just how much they love you or how much they feel for you. I feel like they're really, they're going to want to show you how they feel a lot. Like the interesting thing is that I'm not getting a lot of words here. More than anything, I'm getting a lot of like, I'm feeling a lot of just like physical passion and physical action. Like this person is, is really going to show you how they feel about you through, through physical touch and through like the way they look at you and the way that they, um, like acts of service, quality time, and physical physical touch are like going to be big for them and how they show how they feel about you. But they're definitely confirming the intuitive connection that they feel with you. And this is the type of person like your secrets are their secrets and their secrets are your secrets. Like they're saying any secrets you tell them like they will carry to the grave. Like this is somebody who is literally willing to do almost unspeakable things to defend your honor so i'm kind of like whoa buddy let's keep it legal here uh so i'm not gonna say anything too specific but i feel like this person wants you to know that if they somehow hurt you in the past that, that they are very sorry and that they will never that they've learned from that and they will never do something like that again um or maybe this could talk about self-sabotaging tendencies that they could be currently struggling with if you're not with this person right now. But I think more than, of this than anything is that this person literally would like steal the moon for you is like what I'm getting, which like, I'm like, okay, Gru, is this despicable me? Like they're your minion almost. Why am I channeling minions? Oh my gosh, yeah, you're their favorite girl. <laughs> 
<laughs> but they they like would do unspeakable shit for you and that's honestly probably why you're viewed as the devil because they're like they're literally like i will i will do unspeakable things to make this person happy so i think that their level of devotion is no joke and I think that maybe one thing that might hold them back at times is is they 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 their brain might stop them from acting on their feelings, but they will overcome this. And I think one important thing with this four of swords here is how healing this connection is and how healing you are. They definitely have dreams about you all the time. If you don't know this person yet, they they might pop up in your dreams. Um but if you're already with this person, I think one thing that they just absolutely love is, is downtime with you and spending their time with you. Time with you is very healing. And, and one thing that I notice is that this person has spurts of energy and then they kind of get, then they kind of go, th they go through these, these phases where they're feeling really driven and really motivated. And then for whatever reason, they'll be kind of depleted for a couple days. And whether that's because of a collective thing or um, it could be something like, it could be something like, you know, a lot of heavy stuff in the news, the collective energy is bad, or they're going through a tough time at work or something like that. And you are just going to be the, the motivating factor for them to get back out there and keep going you're going to revitalize them and energize them and you they are so passionate about you and they feel so much passion for you they're very attracted to you and they definitely want to make sure that they make you happy in that arena um i feel like i i love that we started with the sage and now we have the high sage and so i think one of the most beautiful things about this connection is that this person is saying that they really did not know themselves or even understand themselves or the world until they met you. And being with you is like one of the most beautiful gifts that they've ever been given. And if you're not with this person yet, that's how they will feel. They feel you already. And like, even if you don't know who this person is, if you feel like somebody is coming in, I feel like it's this person. They definitely connect with you in the astral realm. So in your dreams and stuff. But they like are are stressing to me that they would they would do unspeakable things to anyone that hurts you. Like they don't they don't wanna they don't wanna hurt you. And if they have, they feel literally horrible about it. And and I think they definitely beat themselves up about it. Um But there there's just this they understand themselves so much more because of being with you and like their intuitive awareness of the world has changed so much. I mean, I, I feel like I can't even do justice to this person's intuitive awareness of the world and, and their love for you. Like, it, it's astronomical. And it's something almost other otherworldly. And I think that one of the beautiful things about your connection is that they love that not everybody is going to understand a love like this and they feel so lucky to be able to have a love like this and, and have it be you and I feel like they're never going to stop finding reasons to, to just oh my god I want to cry <laughs> they're never going to stop finding reasons to love you they're just going to uncover more and I think that their favorite part or what will be their favorite part of being with you is just laying in bed at night and and being together with you and, and getting to just have small moments with you because I think overall there's nothing more special for this person than just being alone with you and, and getting to, to, sh to partake in the, the shared energy between you two. It's going to be really magical and really intense and at times really... You know, at times it will fizzle just because life but you will always find it. Like it will always come back. Like whenever it's gone, trust me, it will come back. And typically it'll be because of just like, you know, time, outside factors. But at the end of the day, this person, this person wants nothing more than to just have a life with you and, and be your other half and explore more about the universe and more about themselves through one another so yeah this connection is very magical and I feel like they just want to know that they could you might be meeting them very soon with this eight of wands or 
you could be reconnecting with them or they could be taking action soon to do something really special for you is kind of like the idea that I'm getting if you already know them. But yeah, they, they really adore you. And yeah, so this sneaky energy might be like them doing some kind of surprise for you. And and if, if you feel like they've been weird, it might be because of that. But I am going to finish off here with some advice and just see what spirit wants you to know. So Spirit, can you please give me advice for pile one when it comes to love and relationships, please? Okay, so we have two. The first card we have is thoughtfulness. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and have fun showing your love. Think of all the little things you can do to show a person you love them. Then stop thinking of those things and actually do them. Is it time to hide a note in someone's pocket, make them a snack, order them a book? Anything thoughtful can be an act of love, even taking the trash out to the dumpster, unless you're dating the trash, which in case, in that case, don't take it to the dumpster, take it somewhere fancy. Wow, who would have thought being so full of thoughts could be considered thoughtful? And we have depth. As new people show, show up in my life, I look for all the weird, wonderful, complex layers below their surface. I can't be surprised by someone's depth of character unless I'm willing to peel back the outer layers and go a little deeper. It's the brand new say as it's like the brand new saying goes, don't judge an onion by its haircut. Yeah, so there's that onions have layers like Shrek shit again. Um, I definitely think like with that iceberg energy, you know, don't judge this person at face value because there's a lot more underneath the surface than you realize. And I think the more you get to know each other and, and see that depth, the more you're going to understand how significant this connection is. But we're going to finish off with a few Moonology cards and see what messages Spirit has for you about this connection. So Spirit, what do you want Pile 1 to know? The end of a tough cycle approaches full moon and Capricorn. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, if, if there, there's been some rough stuff going on, I feel like that's changing. There's definitely change coming to this connection and it's positive change uh, for sure. Or you might be meeting this person soon. Uh, okay, so Spirit, what other advice do you have for Pile 2? Nothing will come of this situation void, of course, a moon. So I feel like this is Spirit's way of saying if you're fretting about this connection, if you're worrying about it, there's no point. With the Seven of Swords here, I feel like this is, isn't something you can anticipate. You can't really anticipate them. And worrying about this connection or worrying who this person is or, or how everything will work out won't help anything. I feel like Spirit is asking you to focus on you. But we have on the back of the deck, step out of your comfort zone. So I feel like Spirit is really saying... You know, it's time to let go of your fears. I mean, this person is going to challenge you anyway to let go of your fears the same way you will them. And so I feel like Spirit is saying, you know, don't worry about this situation. It's all going to work out. This person, you are like, a, you have a soul contract. You're meant to be with one another. Don't be afraid to do things a bit differently and, and be somebody that you know you can be even though you may have not acted in that way before. This connection is going to challenge you and challenge the way that you think you know yourself you're you're gonna really change your perception about life and and who you really are through this connection so spirit says release any fixed ideas you have about yourself or, or love or this connection because worrying about it and stressing about it isn't going to help so i feel like spirit is saying you need to have faith and have trust and and just follow what your soul tells you to do because it's not going to lead you wrong and and do those things that you might be a little bit afraid of doing because it, it's going to have really wonderful rewards. So pile one, I'm going to leave this reading here. Thank you guys so much for watching this all the way through. If you did, definitely let me know down in the comments resonates. I would, how it resonates. I would love to hear, do you know this person? Do you feel like this person is coming in? Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you left it a like. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed. Thank you so much, by the way, for 90,000 subscribers. That's so crazy. I appreciate each and every one of you so much and uh, I just feel so lucky and grateful to be able to get to read for you guys so I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon bye hi there pile two if you guys chose the second oracle card and this bag this is going to be your reading about your soulmate and tons of different details about them so we're gonna look at this oracle card and these charms first 
to get an idea of the nature of this connection overall, any signs or symbolism relating to it, and some extra information. And then we're going to use tarot cards to look at how you'll meet this person or how you did meet this person. Um, we'll have a card describing them and like characteristics and qualities and then we'll see how they see you and then we're going to look at your soul contract and then finally we're going to get messages from them. So this could be from their higher self if you haven't met them yet or maybe things that they have told you in real life or um, things that they want to tell you and then we'll finish off with some advice. So lots of stuff so stick around for all of it because I am really freaking excited and the first reading was really fun so I'm excited for the rest of them. So your relationship is being described as the revolutionary. And this is quite interesting because not only is this connection very powerful, it's definitely a connection that is going to face some challenges. This has heavy power couple energy to me. And I feel like it's quite possible that there might be people that are against this relationship for whatever reason. Maybe it's because of bigoted, outdated beliefs, or um, people might just not understand the nature of this connection, but it's definitely gonna be something where the two of you see the true value and the beauty in it, but maybe not everyone else around you will, and that's only because they are not able to see the beauty of the connection from your or yours or this person's perspective this is like really i think i already said power couple type energy but one thing that's really beautiful about it is that you two have a, a greater mission on this earth likely together or supporting one another in in your soul missions but you both have this goal to empower others and to add more light into the world the revolutionary really makes me think of the tower card and I think that this relationship is going to destroy a lot of old foundations in your life and start new ones that are better and more progressive for your life and your soulmate's life. You two are going to be very, oh, what's the word I wanna use? Real with one another. And I think that's what's really beautiful about this. This is not somebody who is going to always coddle you. Of course, they're going to nurture you when you need nurturing or they need nurtured. But this is also somebody who's going to call you out on your shit and be like, hey, this isn't right or this needs to change. And you're going to do that for them. So not only is this person going to be like your biggest motivator, your biggest cheerleader, but they're also going to be there to help you grow and they, the way that you are going to see the world it will be revolutionary it's it's almost like your second life like this person is going to completely change how you, how you see yourself and how you see the world and I think that you both are going to be torchbearers for people if that makes sense like you might help others through your relationship or through your relationship empowering you, you'll be able to help others with personal things in your life that other people might struggle with, if that makes sense. There's a really strong power couple dynamic and you both are really going to empower one another to be bold and live your purpose. I feel like you guys are like, I can just see you like like your soulmate with like um what's that like a foam finger and uh one of those cowbells like just like and and that to me is just showing how supportive they're gonna be of you and like they're gonna be your biggest fan and like it's gonna be both both ways around and i think that people are not going to understand i feel like you might encounter hate towards your relationship sometimes and i think that some people are just not going to be able to handle how bright both of your lights are and you might be the type of couple that that brings forth truths that you discover in your soul that maybe people don't want to accept or don't understand but the biggest thing is that you're going to lead and empower these are two strong leaders these are two people that um have a mission in life and are committed to that mission and will, are working to create that alone and together you both are very driven and I feel like there's going to be literally like burning passion for one another. And that might not be immediate. 
that might be something that grows over time but this is somebody that you can truly call like a homie a best friend and is somebody that you can really count on ride or die energy so we're gonna look at your oracle cards now and your charms so to start we have the comet number 77 which is interesting because it's, it's so similar to the revolutionary and what's funny is that there's actually i don't know if you can see it but there's a hole in this bag um and i it, it happened because when i was like saging the energy uh, a piece of my sage like fell on the bag and set it on fire so it was almost like a comet so that's pretty interesting um we also have the crow we have the coin and the diamond so one thing that i'm seeing here is that you could accumulate a lot of wealth with this person i definitely this is once again that kind of life partner energy or this is somebody who, like if this isn't a romantic connection this is somebody that's like a best friend like absolute ride or die best friend that you might go into a business with there you, you both are definitely going to face challenges but you're going to come out stronger for them and i think that there's going to be a lot of um stability here and and a solid understanding of even when you both feel like things are out of control or you feel out of control this other person is going to be there to help you stay solid um with the diamond i also think of just april and the birthstone um, so you could be an Aries or Taurus or they could be an Aries or Taurus with the comet I feel like the this could be like your wish on a star type of person somebody that you wish for or maybe they come into your life out of nowhere quick as a flash with that 77 I, I just feel luck attached to it like meeting this person came in a very lucky time or, or came out of nowhere this is the type of person or relationship that you that you wished for and and I feel like it's going to be very energetic, very motivating, very passionate. But with this crow here, I think that there's going to be a lot of intellectual understanding between the both of you. But also, um, this is somebody that you're going to be able to do shadow work with. And if you don't know what shadow work is, it's essentially just addressing those darker things within us that um, maybe our ego doesn't like to address or that we don't want to address. But essentially, you both are going to face the light the light within the both of you and the dark within both of you and you're really going to help one another heal this is very healing but also empowering and and i think that that there's not there's less so a sense of peace with this pile and more so a sense of purpose and drive like and acceptance like rather than being at peace with the things that that hold you both back you're going to be motivated to overcome them anyway and and there's just gonna be a lot of acceptance here and i think that um this connection is just going to be more solid as you go through these trials and tribulations with one another and and i i mean i think that this is really like an unbreakable type of connection and I feel like this is really going to change your mind about how you see love or how you see friendships or how you see relationships in general. Um, but we're going to look at your charms now and see what else comes out here. Oh, and one thing I did want to mention for some reason, this is for my K-pop stands. <laughs> um, I was channeling the song. I actually like, I was like, who even sings the song? It's definitely girls generation. I think the song is X, Y, Z. Um, so it's a very obscure girls generation song and I don't know why that came out so that probably won't resonate for all that definitely won't resonate for all of you but I got the vibe that um I don't know there might be something related to that I don't even speak Korean so I I, I don't even know what that song is truly about but um yeah I think it's called XYZ by Girls Generation anyway looking at your charms here where do I want to start okay so we have the door and this like little magnetic door here if I can open it. Come on, Mr. Door, open for me, please. Oh my God. Okay. There we go. So we have the door charm. We have two music charms, actually. We have this uh, little music note here, and we have the guitar pick when words fail, music speaks. We have the gumball machine. We have the Four of Swords here, the Four of Spades in this tarot card. Ah, okay, well, I guess the lock wants to come out. So we have this padlock here. 
we have two letters. We have a C and we have an H. Oh, we have three letters and we have a D. We have the shamrock, little mermaid, an angel, a crown, and the number zero. So what I'm seeing here is that there's definitely a music connection here, whether um, you might communicate through music or like send each other music. Um, you might both just enjoy music and enjoy listening to it together or have specific artists. You could hear messages in music, but I definitely think that creative expression is gonna be big here. And you might show how you feel about one another through creative expression, but I also think you will telepathically send messages to one another through music. So maybe the, the song itself isn't very significant, but maybe Spirit was stressing that this person might send you messages if like any random songs pop in your head. Like for example, if you were listening to a song yesterday and it pops in your head, it's probably because you were listening to it. But that Girls' Generation song, like, I, I don't even know when I listened to that. So I'm like, why am I years, like literally years. So if it's something that's old and you're like, why is this popping into my head? Uh, that's something to pay attention to. I feel like you are going to meet this person or you will meet one another or this relationship will grow after something ends. You know, when one door closes, another opens and, and maybe maybe you might have false starts with different people or um, maybe there's false starts within this connection. Like you think something more is going to happen, but then the door slams in your face. I feel like for whatever reason, those are meant to happen. I think there's a lot of healing surrounding this connection. You know, the Four of Swords is all about healing. So this is a connection that could definitely be in separation or you could go through a separation with this person. With the shamrock here, I feel like you both are just going to feel really lucky to have one another. One or both of you could have Irish ancestry. You could be from Ireland or um, Celtic culture could just be significant in some way. I definitely think this connection is divinely guided, especially with the crown chakra here. You're going to be very connected at the crown, um, especially with that C here. Um, and with this like angel, I think that you have maybe have a specific guardian angel overlooking this connection, protecting this connection. Um, I definitely think that I can just see your angels doing that like Mike Tyson thing, like now kiss, you know what I mean? Um, with this zero really reminds me of the fool. And I think that this is somebody that you, you're going to be able to be really silly with. And with this padlock here, I think that there are things that you will learn about yourself and about life through this person. Um, and you basically won't unlock these understandings until you're with this person or there is a certain amount of time. A certain amount of time with this person is established. You're gonna, you're just gonna gain a lot of understandings through them. But with this siren here, I feel like you both are gonna be called to one another. There's gonna be an ethereal nature about this connection. Um, oh, really? Okay, I just heard um, a specific line from under the sea and it was definitely meant in a cheeky context, especially with that D here. Um, everything's better down where blank. I'm not even gonna say the rest. I'm just like, come on. But also it's kind of funny. It's just really funny. Uh, yeah, this person is definitely very cheeky. Um, with this crown chakra, I feel like this is gonna be like the greatest love of your life for both of you. Um, and if this is like a platonic connection, it's like, one of the best friends you'll ever have and like a crowning a crowning friendship because for some of you I could definitely see friendship here but I like I said I am focusing on romantic connections um yeah with this crown you both connected the crown chakra there's a lot of spiritual energy surrounding this connection but I think that the spiritual nature of it won't be very apparent to people other than you two because you're going to be making a lot of progress in the 3D is kind of what I'm seeing with this diamond and this coin. There is an abundance of blessings to come from this connection. And I like that it's represented by the gumball because it's going to be different for all of you. But essentially, Spirit is saying these are all blessings. And this connection is going to bring about, you know, some challenges for sure. And it's going to force a lot of healing. But at the same time, you're going to be able, you're going to have access to opportunities you never thought possible, um, access to resources you never thought you could manage or make available. And I feel like you're really going to have a fresh start with this person and, and 
create a beautiful life together or create some type of thing, whether it's a music group, a business, whatever with this person. So this is definitely a soulmate and somebody that's meant to be in your life. So I am going to move the charms out of the way. Just move them up into the corner. And we're going to start using looking at the tarot cards and seeing kind of what information we can get from that. So to start, I want to see how you two will meet. And that is being represented by the Nine of Swords. So more crow imagery here. Maybe Edgar Allan Poe has some significance. Whenever I think of Edgar Allan Poe, I always think of um, him in South Park and like, you know, how he's he's so emo and he's like, whatever, you guys are just a bunch of posers. Like, you know, he's just a drama queen. Um, I feel like you're going to be at a place in life or you both will be at a place in life where you're not doing too hot when you meet this person. Um, you could just be really anxious, you could have a lot of anxiety problems, or you could just be in your head or in a dark place. You might feel really misunderstood, or you might feel like, you might feel like everyone's just a bunch of posers, like you're just not gonna be into it. Like people around you are gonna be fake and you're gonna feel like there's nobody that truly understands you or that you'll never find love or that you'll never be a lot of rumination here and a lot of feeling like you have no way to tell when people are fake or not or that nobody gets you there there's a, a longing for something that you but you don't know what it is a spoiler alert it's this person um but maybe when you initially meet this person you won't see how significant this connection is until you're able to get out of your head you might be really maybe when you first meet this person well, first of all, you might actually meet this person on the astral realm, even though this talks about sleeplessness. Maybe you have trouble sleeping around the time that you meet them, or you meet them really late at night. But you might dream about this person and have no idea about it until you meet them in real life. But I think that when they come in, they're going to come like out of nowhere is kind of the energy that I'm getting. And it's going to be at a time in your life where maybe you're just feeling really unsure of yourself or you're getting over a lot of difficult things or you're getting over trauma of some kind and I feel like this person is just going to come in and you might not even see them for as a soulmate in the beginning because you're so wrapped up in your own like shit that you got going on but I want to see how they are being represented so they are being represented as the ace of pentacles and so what I'm kind of seeing right away is that this is going to be somebody who's very solid and very down to earth. Um, they could be an earth sign or have earth placements. That would be Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. Um, maybe they're going to be very generous towards you. Like they might um, be buying you something. Like if you on a date or you're just out, they might like buy you drinks or buy you food or something. Um, I see this person as somebody who you will recognize as a very solid, solid, solid person to invest in. They could be young when you meet them or they could just be starting out in life. Like maybe they're a student or maybe they're starting their own business or something like that. But whatever it is, I think that that you will see in this person that that there's potential for something really special and something really solid here. You're going to tell that you're going to be able to tell that this is somebody very valuable. And I get some some uh, like something about their energy is very calming and very peaceful. And the funny thing is that I don't think that they're actually like this all the time. I feel like they have just as much of this anxiety as you do. But for whatever reason, when you're in their presence, they're somehow able to be like calm and and just level headed and, and there and present. And maybe they maybe they're they're not actually, but from your perspective, they are. But I think one thing's for sure is that this person is going to be very solid and very committed to this, um, to this connection or committed to getting to know you. Um, maybe they will offer you something more than once. Because um, for some reason, I'm getting this energy like maybe you might not be very receptive to this offer at first or maybe you're not in the place to accept it. Uh, but I feel like this person isn't going to waver about their feelings for you because with you both being revolutionaries, I feel like this person is going to see you as someone worth committing to right away. And like, they're never going to let go of that, even if there is time apart or there is anything 
that happens between the both of you. Um, this is definitely somebody that you will be able to see a future with and they'll be able to see a future with you no matter how long that takes. But I think as a person overall, they're, they're going to be somebody that you can depend on. Um, they're going to be somebody that you can rely on and they're going to want to take care of you and they're going to want to they're going to want to like build, build a life with you, build riches with you is something like pentacles are definitely big here. And I feel like you both will have this similar committed, committed idea of like these dreams you want to accomplish with this comet here. I feel like you might have similar dreams or similar goals that you want to accomplish. And I think that this person is just going to be a partner that you can really see a future with and somebody that you, you feel like you can trust and somebody that you feel grounded to and somebody that you feel um, really connected to. So I want to see how they are going to perceive you and you are being represented by the wheel of fortune or the wheel in this case, I guess. So I'm getting a couple of different interpretations. First of all, the fixed signs can appear in the wheel, same with the world, which would be Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius, and Taurus. So you could be one of those signs or have those placements. But I also think that this person's perception of you is going to change over time. And I feel like the spirit's being kind of vague here because I feel like this is, like I said, this is going to be like a really big, long connection, a very long standing connection. And so they're going to see different phases of you and they're going to see your growth. They're going to see you um, during your highs. They're going to see you during your lows. And they're just going to kind of be along for the ride. This is somebody who is going to study you and study you in ways that like you might not even be aware of. Both of you are incredibly perceptive and I almost see things going both ways, like a lot of mirroring energy here. Um, but this person is going to accept you for all that you are because at, at their core, what they are going to fall in love with is your soul, which duh, they're a soulmate. But it was something more beautiful with that. Oh, I just heard the song Blackbird. Oh, that like makes me want to cry. Blackbird by the Beatles. Um, all your life, you've been waiting for this moment. Like there's something incredibly beautiful about this where like you both won't fully feel free until you're together is kind of like what I'm getting. But this person is going to love every version of you because your heart or their heart is attached to your soul and like they know what your soul essence is and I feel like they're just going to fall in love with every single version of you every version that you grow as and they're just going to love seeing your progression and and seeing how they can grow with you and like oh my gosh I'm like tearing up I knew this I knew this reading was going to make me emotional because these are really beautiful love connections but this person is going to be like, once they decide that they want to be with you, they're very fixed and committed to that. Like they want to have a life with you. They want to put down roots and they want to grow something really special with this. And I feel like this person is going to embrace all of your positive qualities and all of your negative qualities. And they're going to be here to support you. They're going to call you out on their shit and they're going to expect you to call them out on their shit. And I think that one thing that just will never change is that their heart is always going to be fixed on you, always. Um, like you're their prized possession, like with Taurus energy, like there's nothing more special than you and, and the life that you're building together. So they're being represented as a very solid, solid person that wants to be with you and, and sees you as someone worthy of investing in. So I want to look at your soul contract now. So we're gonna do that with these four cards. This is the synesthesia tarot, if you were wondering. But we have the eight of pentacles. Oh, I wanna put those, I put it here, I'll put it here. We have the six of pentacles. We have the ace of cups and the page of pentacles. So if you, and this person have kids or have children, it's possible a specific child is part of this soul contract. Um, it doesn't have to be. But I definitely think that your soul contract revolves a lot around the physical world, which is interesting because this is a spiritual connection. 
but I think that this person is kind of like the missing link for both of you. It, it's vice versa to create the progress in your physical life that you want. Like this is ideal life partner, um, life partner energy. Um, but if this is like a friend or a family member, this is somebody that you start a business with or create a venture with that, that ends up becoming very fruitful, but deep work happens with you too. And part of your soul contract is to be philanthropic or generous with the wealth you both accumulate. Um, I feel like this is the connection in your life that is going to be the most balanced in terms of give and take. You both are going to make sacrifices for one another and you're also going to um, be open to things that you wouldn't be before with this person. With the Eight of Pentacles here, work could definitely be a huge factor. Um, maybe you create a business together. Maybe you just work hard in life to create the life that you want, but you both, I mean, Capricorn energy, I get heavy just with that, that, that willingness to work hard and the willingness to put the work in internally and externally. This person wants to build a beautiful life with you in the 3D. They they want like I I feel like this person might be very 3D motivated or you might be very 3D motivated. And so this is like maybe you will help this person become more 3D motivated, but I can see both of you like both of you want to have nice things. Both of you want to have a nice life and and be comfortable and and be happy. And so I feel like you're going to start from very humble beginnings and through hard work create something very beautiful. But I think what's more important here is this Ace of Cups. You are, I feel like there's this emotional depth that maybe you both might have trouble talking about at times. If this is a friend thing, then I think it's just gonna be something apparent and maybe you guys are like mushy gushy, like, oh, I love you so much and stuff like sometimes. But overall, this Ace of Cups is like, there's going to be this never ending regeneration of feelings like the through each trial and tribulation or each cycle that you go through, you're going to finish it with emotional fulfillment and start with even deeper emotions. Like the more time you spend with the, this person and the more that happens between the both of you, the stronger your like romantic connection is going to be. This is a very like Acts of service could be a huge love language here or gifts. Um, maybe this person, maybe you both will really enjoy showering one another in gifts. But one thing that I feel like I'm getting is that spirit is bringing you two together or, or has brought you two together or will bring you two together to accumulate a lot of wealth, but not hoard that wealth. You know, the six of pentacles is a lot about being generous. And I think that you both might create philanthropic pursuits or... Um, or be committed to bettering the world, like revolutionary, like you might be very generous with your money or you might um, create a foundation or you might do a lot of charity work with this person, but I think it's going to give you drive to work even harder to make more money to help more people. And I think that it, this is a relationship that might progress slowly but steadily or slowly but surely, but I feel like the feelings are going to be there from the start. Like both of these people are going to have feelings for one another. And this is definitely Spirit's way of saying that the romantic connection you will feel with this person is very authentic. And while it might not always be apparent, like, like not very PDA-ish, you will, you will feel it and, and you both will be able to, it might take time to express those sorts of feelings. Like you both might be very reserved when it comes to talking about your feelings, but I think that you are going to help one another with that. And I think you're, you are going to help one another start from very meager beginnings to create something very special. And I think that like one thing that I'm getting, pen wheels might be significant, but I feel like you might not be blown away by the offer that this person has, or this person might not be blown away by an offer that you have. And it might just start as something like, yeah, maybe something more can happen here. Like with the page and the Ace of Pentacles, it's like, I could see something, but will it actually happen? And Spirit's saying yes, because this, this relationship is going to be work. 
but this is somebody who's going to motivate you to work really hard and you them and I feel like there's a lot of blessings that are going to come because of it and you're going to get a lot of gifts from the universe for all the hard work that you do because trust me all of the things that you freely give to others you're going to get back tenfold and um I feel like you're going to be really like you might struggle with people judging your relationship in the beginning but I feel like by the time this connection is established like a couple years 10 years down the line people are gonna like feel really guilty for how they judge this relationship or how they perceive this relationship because they're gonna realize how real it is and how beautiful it is that you two are together because one you might have to overcome a lot and it might take a lot of hard work but it, it's going to give you grit it's going to give you character it's going to give you determination and it's gonna it's gonna help your heart be more open to generosity towards others and and being more um understanding towards oddball connections or connections that you think might not make much sense um maybe you meet this person when you're very young and so or just in a stage where you're where you could see something solid with them but maybe they're not ready for commitment or you're not ready for commitment and, and you both are just younger but i feel like spirit is saying that that there's something fixed about this. Like it's just, it's going to happen all in due time. And I feel like this, if you haven't met this person yet, or you know who this person is and you're not with them, spirit's really stressing about divine timing and trusting in the 3d world and focusing on you and focusing on your work. Cause this person is meant to help you focus on your work and maybe your life's purpose related to work, but they're also meant to help you be more open and receptive to love and, um, create a beautiful life that you could see living. So now I want to look at what they would say to you. So if you haven't met this person yet, this is going to be messages from their higher self. And if you have met this person, then obviously these are things that they would say to you. So we have the fool. We have the queen of pentacles or the sovereign of coins. So much pentacles energy, honestly. Um, so, I mean, earth signs are definitely represented here, but with but Queen of Pentacles is also mother energy. Um, we have Judgment, the Chariot, and the Five of Swords. Let me just fix these really quick, because otherwise it's gonna bother me, and I know it bothers people when I touch the cards all the time. So I'm sorry if I if 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 that bothers you guys. I don't even realize that I'm doing it. I'm just the cards are speaking to me. I get their answers by touching them which I'm just kidding, but I, I don't know, maybe it's like a nervous tick of mine or something. But okay, so in terms of what your person wants you to know, what this soulmate wants you to know. So they could be, so if you are interested in more feminine people or women, and the soulmate is a woman, then I definitely think that they are saying that they want to be like, the mother of your children, um, or like just they, they want to nurture you, they want to take care of you. Um, this person, like, I feel like they want to have your babies <laughs> for sure. Um, especially with that page of pentacles coming out, they're like, I could really see something solid with you. Um, but even if it's not like literal children, like, like let's say you're a same sex couple and you maybe don't want kids, then I feel like they, they want, you know, fur babies or plant babies or like they want to have a cute little family with you and they kind of want to take on that more nurturing role or they they want you to do that if that's what you're more interested in like I almost see even though this relationship is unconventional it's almost like the roles that you both want to take take on are um pretty traditional with the fool here I feel like this person you know if they haven't if you're not with this person yet they're so excited for their fresh start with you. It's kind of like the same with that zero. They they love how silly they can be with you or they're excited to be really silly and really goofy with you. And I'm hearing that Haley Steinfeld song, like I didn't know that I was starving until I tasted you or something. Something about butterflies, but you give them the whole damn zoo and you do things to their body. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah, you guys are gonna have a lot of fun there. Um, but with this judgment card, um, there is, this person is going to literally come alive, like once you two are together, like 
there's going to be so many awakenings and I feel like you're going to have a lot better of an understanding about your purpose and why you are meant to be here and why it is this person that you're meant to be with or um, if this is like a friendship connection. I definitely think that this is somebody who is excited to get that bag with you. This is somebody who um, has is learning so much from you and feels so grateful to have this connection with you and is really motivated to move forward. Um, I feel like this person has definitely been hurt really badly in the past and has been betrayed in the past and um, maybe didn't even believe that love existed anymore, that a love, that they could feel this way for somebody or that they could trust somebody. And I feel like you made them believe that this was possible again. If anything went down between the both of you, I feel like this is their way of saying that they, they know, like, they want to reconcile that and that whatever happened, it was very painful. Even if they were the one that created it, it was very painful for them, but they want to move forward. They want to, they want to, oh my gosh. Okay. I don't know. This, this is the pile just filled with different references that I'm getting, but in the very beginning of Step Brothers, there's a George Bush quote and it's like, family is where something takes flight where wings dare to dream. It's like a quote that makes no sense, but it's like where wings take dream. And I don't know why I was seeing that for that chariot card. So this could be, um, this is, we have that cancer energy there with the chariot. Um, in, in judgment, I believe Archangel Gabriel is in the judgment card. I could be wrong about that, but what we did have this angel come out. So there could be a specific Archangel connected to this soulmate connection so you can definitely pray to them if you are ever struggling but I feel like this person just wants you to know how excited they are for their future with you or how special they think you are if you're already with this person they are just excited to keep moving forward with you they love your connection they love you they love being with you they love spending time with you being close to you they love that they don't feel alone and they know what real pain feels like and, and with you, it's like they can be their true authentic selves. They can be their, their child, childlike fun self. Like this is, this is a couple that works hard and plays hard. Like you guys know how to have fun, but you also know how to get down and get to work. And we definitely have Aries energy with the fool. So Aries could be significant as well. But I think that this person overall, you know, they you've made them believe in things that they didn't even believe existed. And I think that's authentic love. I think that's a life partner. I think that's somebody who's worthy of them. So, so maybe they have a very, maybe they already see themselves as like a queen or king of pentacles. And, um, and because of that, they, they know that not just anybody is worthy of them. Like they, maybe they knew their worth when you met them and maybe you were like, Oh, maybe I'm not good enough for them. But I feel like this person knew very quickly, like you were what they wanted. Um, but yeah, with the chariot here, I feel like this this person is really excited to move forward. Maybe they want to move somewhere with you or they want to travel a lot with you. But I think with this judgment card, they, they were not seeing clearly until after you two got together or after you started on your purpose. Um, one good example of the judgment card that I like to talk about is in my Alice in Wonderland deck. And they use this illustration of these 2d cards like flat on the ground or flat on paper like flipping up and becoming 3d and becoming these 3d moving cards and so i feel like this is kind of more about how how special this connection is going to be and i feel like spirit is almost wanting to talk more about what's going to happen in a 3d because either the 5d connection is so natural or you already know a lot about the 5d connection because i think there's a lot more about grounding here. This is somebody that's going to be your rock. This is somebody that you can rely on. Somebody that's going to that's going to move forward with you and is not going to hurt you. And if they have in the past, I think it's because of like, you know, young and dumb or I didn't know what I was doing or something like that. They might feel like a fool. But they want this new beginning with you and if you've already gotten this new beginning with this person, it's the best thing that that they've ever had. Like you're the best thing in their life and they and they love your fam love your family that you have together or they love um they really want this family together 
but they feel lucky. I mean, we have that shamrock here. Like there's a lot of luck and good, good karma surrounding this connection whenever it does come together. But I think that you are going to create a lot of good karma by all of the good things that you're going to do for other people. You're both going to be very protective and nurturing of one another. And I feel like this person just wants to say thank you for, for existing. <laughs> and if you haven't met them yet, I can promise you that they're very excited to meet you and they're well on their way. They're coming. So it might take some time and you might have to, you might have to do your own thing, but spirit is saying, you know, this is divinely guided. This is coming. And this person, yeah, they just feel so lucky and, and, and they're committed to you. They, or they will be committed to you. You can rely on them. They, they want to grow this into something beautiful. I mean, there's so much earth energy here. And I feel like while there's this fun impulsivity and, and this intense burning passion at times and these deep feelings, I think at the end of the day, you know, you guys kind of cycle through those feelings together. Like you'll cycle through intense passion and then, and then sweet feelings. But the one thing that will always stay no matter what you're going through is this commitment to each other, this solid, this solid determination to be there for one another and the respect for one another and, and like the work that you put in like neither of you is going to take this connection lightly like this is so committed I, I am once you're with this person I don't see you not being with this person and I think that you're really going to be like a safe space for them and I feel like they've really experienced a lot of hurt and it might hurt the both of you if people are not um in supportive of this connection but I feel like this person is saying that you both are stronger than that and you will overcome any adversity that you face and that they are here to overcome that adversity with you and um they're just so grateful for you they're grateful i mean you've brought them a lot closer to their own spirituality and i think that will be vice versa but i think that this person is going to have a, a stronger connection to the earth a stronger connection to family to ancestors through you and I, I almost wonder if this is like, maybe you have the same ancestry or maybe you have like spirit guys that, that were like making sure to orchestrate you two together. Like, you know how, you know how in Bridgerton, like when um, Daphne's mom and uh, not, I, I know it's not Simon's mom, but I haven't watched it in a while now, so I can't remember. Lady Danbury, I think she's a queen. And then, so, you know, they're like, they're like chilling with each other, like, um, scheming up how they're gonna get them together i feel like that's that's almost like what your guides are doing uh but hopefully it's not as messy as what what the bridgerton stuff is um but that's also a tv show and this is real life so yeah i feel like this person loves how serious but how lighthearted this connection can be and they just want you to know that that they're coming or or that they oh my god that they come to the thought of you i'm sorry i'm just gonna start saying it um if this is a friendship obviously leave that i mean unless you're friends with benefits um i always feel like really weird del delivering those messages but at the same time i'm like i know I'm, i know i'm supposed to give them but this is this is a connection where i i mean like all that in a bag of chips is the way i would describe it i mean you got you've got this the, the psychic type connection you've got the 3d really solid connection i could see you guys like building a house together or like remodeling a house together or um yeah, just building this life with one another or coming together after you've built some of your life and, and just creating something really beautiful. And I think at the end of the day, this 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 relationship is going to be solid as a rock. I mean, diamonds are formed under pressure and you guys are going to be like two diamonds. And I think that this connection is really being represented by a diamond because I'm pretty sure that's like the hardest material like, like it's very hard to cut through diamonds and so I think that this is just kind of showing how strong and how revolutionary this connection is going to be I mean it's going to change your world it's going to change how you view things and I think that this is very likely the person that you are going to spend the light your life with um and you're also going to get that bag so that's pretty awesome so I feel like I've been um rambling for long enough now and have given you more than enough references <laughs> So we are going to see what advice Spirit has for you to finish this reading off. So Spirit, what advice do you have for Pile 2 when it comes to um, relationships and this connection? Okay, we got two, or no, we got three. 
You guys get one extra than pile one. Don't tell them. Benefit of the doubt. I believe in the basic goodness of other people and I give them the chance to show it. If they prove me wrong, that's on them. At least I can go to sleep knowing that I practice trust and forgiveness rather than fear and doubt. And later on, if I need to, I can always change my mind and retroactively judge them like it's my career. And I think that that's really, like, especially if this is a connection where maybe something happened in the past, I feel like if this person... I feel like if you need to show this person that you've changed or this person needs to show you that they've changed, I feel like Spirit is asking you to look at this from a different light. But if you're fearful of opening up to them and they're a new person, I feel like Spirit's really asking you to give them the benefit of the doubt here. We also have solidarity. I respect the power of solidarity and look for the opportunities to unleash it. When a loved one has to do something tough, I'll heed their often, often silent, but sometimes loud and whiny call and participate in the toughness with them. Everything is easier when a partner cohort sidekick joins you. The only thing that's not easier is feeling resentment, which I suppose is the overall point. So this is definitely a, an excellent example. And I like, I'm glad that I pulled this card because I think solidarity is exactly what describes this connection, despite how crazy the feelings might be or how, um, how other people might view it. Like this is somebody who will help you with like, you will work together. You'll be good team members and you'll do things even when you don't feel like them. But we also have wholeness. I am complete, whole, and filled with love. I have everything I need. If I ask or look for more, I'm ignoring the love and gifts that are already in my life. Instead, I'll be grateful and acknowledge that anything else would be extra icing on life's cake. FYI to whoever is listening, extra icing is totally welcome as it's obviously the most delicious part. As I've said on this channel before, I disagree. I think sprinkles are better, but that's just me. Um... I love this because I think maybe this person won't come in or this relationship won't progress into something stronger until you both are more confident in yourselves. Like you might meet this person when you're in a really bad place, but this might trigger some type of um, growth within you to be balanced and move forward with this person. Because I think one thing that Spirit is stressing is that you both are two very strong individuals alone. And, and that strong-willed nature is going to bring you both it's just going to make you both even stronger. Like this is power couple energy. You're going to achieve a lot together. And if you are already with this person, you know exactly what I mean. And if you have yet to meet this person, um, whoa, buddy, you have no idea. Like you just, you have no idea. So I'm going to get some final messages. What spirit wants you to know about this connection and advice. So spirit, what do you want to tell pile two about this connection and what advice do you have for them, please? Okay, so to start, a personal e issue reaches resolution, full moon in cancer. What else, spirit? Have faith in your dreams, waxing crescent moon. And on the back of the deck, I actually feel like both of these are meant for you. Don't let pride get in your way, full moon in Leo. And adjustments are required, third quarter moon. So I think because you both are very strong personalities, at times it might be hard. There's a lot of lion imagery here. And Leo is a fixed sign. So you could be Leo or maybe you both have Leo placements or this person has Leo placements. We already saw Cancer with that chariot. But I think that if this is something, if this connection has been weighing on your soul or this is somebody that you dream about being with, I feel like Spirit is saying that will be resolved or a personal issue that maybe is holding this connection back will be resolved. But I do think that you both have like, this is a connection you'll have to work for and like make concessions for and, and you know, compromise. And, and I feel like Spirit is saying, don't be too prideful to be open to compromise or be open to things that might need to change. Um, you know, I feel like this connection is going to be challenging with that tower moment. You know, it's, well, there is no tower here, but the revolutionary makes me think of the tower, like I said, and you know, towers remove foundations. And so I think that you're going to be able to build a foundation with this person, but you might have to adjust things and change things and come to a compromise. Um, but yeah, but spirit is definitely saying release any need to be always right with this person. I feel like once you both get over that kind of ego barrier and are able to just be open and honest with one another, um, it will definitely help you both be more authentic. And I think that is what's really going to strengthen this bond. But um, I'm going to leave this reading here, pile two. Thank you guys so much for watching this all the way through. If you did, I would definitely love to hear down in the comments how it resonates. And um, if you already know this person, uh, 
how how is it and if you haven't met this person yet do you have an idea of who this is um i really love this energy it was really awesome to channel um if you enjoyed this video i would love it if you left it a like if you haven't already and if you have not subscribed i would love if you did that as well thank you guys so much for 90,000 subscribers that is so unreal to me um but i'm so grateful and i just feel so lucky that i get to read for you guys um, but yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, pile three. If you guys chose the third card and this bag of charms and oracles, this is going to be your reading. So what we're going to do first is we're going to use this oracle card and this bag to look at different factors of this connection and the overarching message that spirit wants you to know about this soulmate connection. We'll also be able to see if there's any like symbols or signs related to this connection. And then we're going to look at how you did meet or will meet this person, um, how they are being represented and how they'll perceive you or how they do perceive you. And then we're going to look at your soul contract with them. And then we're going to look at messages from them. So if you haven't met this person yet, it will be from their higher self or it could just be from their higher self in general or like if you're in separation or whatever with them and then we'll get some advice. So we've got lots and lots today. I'm really excited to get into it. So we're gonna go ahead and start because this is a long ass reading and your connection is being represented by the card soul work. So uh, the bee could be a very symbolic animal to the both of you. There's a ton of hexagons here and um, hexagons are representative. They have six sides and six is a number of unconditional love. But what I'm really getting right off the bat is that this is somebody who is going to really help you grow and vice versa. This is somebody that I think that you have had multiple lifetimes with. Um, this is somebody that I think that you have been like soulmates and been together in, in different lives. I feel like you both are old souls or you... Um, are partners that help ascend together but I mean this is very indicative of a relationship that spirit brings about to help the both of you grow to understand the nature of unconditional love and to help you know your purpose I think that your soul's purpose um, is connected to this soulmate um, so whether it's a platonic soulmate and you are will create something with them or if this is a rom romantic soulmate and you'll create a family or a business or anything. I feel like Spirit is saying that your purpose is tied in with this person and this is somebody that's going to help keep you on track, going to hold you accountable to achieve your goals and this is somebody that's going to motivate you to be better and you're going to do the same. This is definitely a relationship where both people are going to be committed to making it work. And the longer you are with this person, the more you're going to understand why this person is in your life and, and like the dedication to this connection and what that might be. If you are drawn to pile two as well, there could be parallels between this pile and pile two. Um, there's a diamond on top of the B and there was a diamond in one of the cards on in pile two but i mean these readings are super long so i don't blame you if you don't want to check it out but um i feel like spirit is saying that this is like this is a very special person this could be your one this is somebody like you both are going to grow and create something beautiful this connection is going to be tough as nails and and under pressure you're going to form into your truest selves and who spirit wants you to be so i think this is going to be a very beautiful connection and it's not always going to be sunshines and rainbows i feel like there's going to be tough times this might be a connection that you you know this person and you might be in separation with them because it's like a um you're doing soul work alone no matter what this person is is meant to help you grow and will be a catalyst for change and for growth and you for them and it's not always going to be easy growth but it's going to be worthwhile growth and i think at the core of it the core message will be loving someone unconditionally so we are going to look at these little mini oracle cards now and see what's on here so to start we have a scarab beetle 
truthfully, I don't know too much about scarab beetles, but I feel like they have something to do with abundance. Maybe you had past lives in Egypt. Um, we also have the arrow. We have the stick and the boot. So I really like this because this, I feel like one thing that I'm getting is that this connection is not going to be easy. This isn't the type of like easy breezy beautiful soulmate connections that, you know, we see people talk about or in movies. This is something where you two are triggered by one another to grow, but it's like in a good way. Um, and, I'm not, and I'm not saying that like it's it's all negative, but like you will definitely face challenges here and there will be but all of these challenges are conducive to your connection growing stronger and you and this person growing even more. But I will start with the scarab beetle. Um, like I said, you could have past lives with this person in um, in Egypt. I mean, like just historically speaking, I'm a huge history nerd when it comes to ancient history and Egypt lasted for a very, very long time. So the likelihood, if, you, if you're an old soul or which you very likely had past lives, it's very likely that at some point you two were chilling in Egypt, whatever era that may be. Um, I had a particular pharaoh just like come to mind. I'm not saying that you're this pharaoh, but it could have been in that time era. Uh, I think it was king or queen has steps. I can't even say it right. It's like, I don't know. I'll write it in the comments or something, but that, that just came in my head. So it could have been maybe during that time period or something like that. Um, I think the Hepsep, uh, I can't even say it right. Hepsepsut or something like that. I think they were a queen, but I could be totally wrong. With this arrow though, I definitely, I love that it's like just pointing back at soul work. This is definitely, this is a partner that, that has stuck with you throughout lifetimes to give you direction, to help you grow, to confront the things in your ego that um, maybe hold you back, to fight for you and, and to for you to fight for them, to stand up for what you believe in. But I definitely feel like this is somebody who you move forward really quickly with them or you accomplish a lot with them. With this boot here, I feel like this is somebody who you can rely on to give you a swift kick in the ass if you need it. Like if you are if you have a bad attitude or you're just not looking at things clearly, this person can really wake you up. Um, but they, at the same time, they worship you in a way. Like you're their queen bee and vice versa. They're going to work their ass off to see that you're happy and the, and the same for you towards them like it's very mutual and and this is this is the type of thing where it's not always easy but it's so rewarding and now what I really want to stress is that like just because you get in disagreements with somebody doesn't mean that something is toxic I feel like the word toxic is thrown around way too much and like we kind of need to chill with that because Yes, there are lots of things that are toxic and there are absolutely toxic connections, but this is a soulmate connection, so this is not going to be toxic. It is going to force you to grow. And like the same thing with toxic positivity. You both aren't just going to sweep your issues under the rug and act like they don't exist. You're going to address them. You're going to discuss them. This is healthy, mature growth. This person's going to help keep you grounded and... I feel like you are going to, you might love dancing with them is a little random message that I'm getting, but I feel like this, this connection is going to help you be tough as nails because you're always going to have this person or you will have learned from this connection and this person, because for some of you, I almost wonder if this is a soulmate that maybe you don't spend your entire life with, but you learn a lot from. Now, I don't want to make you panic or anything like that. Like, please, like I, in terms of timing, I have no idea. It's going to be different for all of you. And this might even be a platonic soulmate, so who knows. But that's all up to your different specific journeys. But th this person is definitely meant to be in your life. They're meant to help you grow as a soul. They're, they're going to help you be stronger in yourself and in your purpose and in your mission. You both are going to fight for one another. You both are going to be very... Um, very frisky with one another with that stick here. Um, and you guys are going to go, go at bat for one another. 
This is somebody who's really going to see you at your best and at your worst and it's going to help keep you grounded, but also help you fly and help you grow. They're going to give you direction and you them. And this is going to be a very mutual connection where you both are working for the mutual benefit. For example, if you have a family for this person, you both are going to be working to have the best hive or have the best family connection. You know, if um, you live in a community together, you're going to be very communal about that. I, I just see you doing work to benefit like your community or your tribe or the people around you. But I definitely think there's a lot of abundance associated with this pile and a lot of um, 3D benefits from this. But I do think there will maybe be people that will be jealous of this connection or will um, maybe not fight it, but, but not understand it in some way. But I'm gonna get the charms now and see what we have here. So to start, I guess we'll start with letters. We have O, we have G, you're ready to go. <laughs> um, we have B, and don't be, don't be, um, if you don't see your signs or you don't see your letters, like don't be discouraged. If it's resonating, take it. These are just extras. And we have F, so let's see. We also have the shooting star. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels between pile two. So this could definitely be um, similar. We have the world charm. We have Leo, which on the back of Leo, it says generous. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of generosity here. And we have Gemini. And on the back of that, it says intelligence. We also have the blessed charm. We have this little blue charm, which makes me think of the third eye chakra. And we have the squirrel. So this pile definitely got the most letters. So the letters could spell something significant. I was thinking of a key fob for some reason. Um, I definitely see Aquarius energy with the star. I feel like this connection is almost everything that you wished for. And maybe you won't realize that at first. Like I almost see for some of you, this is a connection that you might fight against at first, or you may not understand the purpose of it. I would say of all the piles so far, if any, if this, if any connection were to be in separation at some point, it's definitely this pile, because I definitely see that there's there's work that you both are meant to do alone and work that you're meant to do together. With the world, I mean, not only is this person going to broaden your world, but maybe. Maybe you'll come from different places. Maybe this is a long distance connection. Um, maybe you have different ethnic backgrounds or cultural backgrounds. This could also just represent the fixed energies. So that would be Aquarius, Leo, um, Scorpio, and uh, Taurus. So they could have those signs. But I think that, you know, this person, you might travel the world with this person or hope to travel with the, the world with this person. I definitely think that if this is a connection that goes in separation, like the seeds will be planted for something to change in the future. But that doesn't mean that it, that they will go through this. Um, I just like to be open to all the different possibilities that might be there. Um, with this squirrel energy, though, I feel like this this is representative of you both, you know, being capable of doing the work and and. and one thing I just heard is always landing on your feet, which squirrels do. And so I feel like this is this connection or this situation that you find yourself in. Like you both are going to be able to get out of some tough situations together or no matter what you're going through, you, you both will always land on your feet. And maybe that's something you'll bond over, you know, with that F, with that foot. Um, this person will keep you grounded for sure. But I think that there's there's something deeper to it. Like you might go through some really intense stuff together, like when you're with this person. And I think that you both will be the driving motivation to get through them. But I feel like you're always going to land with your feet on the ground. Like even if things get crazy and scary or like you're not sure what the future holds, this connection is blessed and it is blessed by the divine. It's something that they want to happen if it hasn't happened already. And so I feel like you will always have that hope of a better future. This is a pretty optimistic connection. Aquarius energy with the star, if I didn't say already. Um, but I feel like this is, this is a mechanism for 
accomplishing your dreams or making your dreams a reality. You might wish for this person. You might be manifesting this person. But I feel like this is almost an answered wish for the both of you. And I think that you both will give each other hope for a better future, for, um, for a future that you both want. And I think that this, this mutual vision, you both could be clairvoyant is something that I'm hearing this mutual vision. Like even when, even when you fall flat, you'll, you'll both have this hope together that you'll get through it. And the spirit's basically saying, you know, you'll, you both will always land, land on your feet and you'll understand later why it is that you went through what you went through. And it's all to, to benefit your growth and to aid your growth. This is, this is somebody that you, um, really just evolve with and ascend with and you know with this third eye the psychic connection here is real you could definitely chill on the astral with them or have a lot of dreams with them in the astral but i think what's interesting is that you know blue can also represent the throat chakra but i think that might be something that that you guys are learning is how to be more direct in communication or be more open and honest with your communication but with the charms being out of the way I am going to get more information with your tarot cards now. So we are going to start and what I want to see first. So this card is going to represent how you two meet or will meet. And so representing that we have the page of cups. So you could meet this person when you're young or when you're out having a good time. Like you can meet this person at a party. You can meet this person at a beach or in a beach town. Um, I feel like one or both of you will be, I feel like the connection will be obvious or the there will be flirtatiousness between the both of you or one will be pursuing the other is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And I think the one that is pursuing the other, if, if that is the scenario, they are going to view you or, um, you're going to view them as above you. So whoever is doing the pursuing, they are going to th view the other as somebody worth attaining and somebody that maybe they're chasing or they're, they're really focused on. Like maybe this is like seeing somebody from across the room energy. Like this is feeling instantly drawn to someone. Definitely a bit flirtatious. I actually... I got an elevator, so for some of you, maybe you meet this person in an elevator. Um, I don't, I don't know about that for all of you, but I definitely think for some. But with the flying pig here, I just, I feel like this is somebody that is like a wish come true, or you didn't believe could exist, or your your soulmate didn't believe that you could exist. So you might be this person, or they might be this person. But essentially, I think it's going to be really innocent, very playful. I could even see like maybe a little kiss at the end of the night um, or like, or, you know, giving each other your number or something like that. I feel like the, the, the attraction is going to be instant and mutual. One might play a little hard to get or, or be a little aloof, but I think that um, overall, the way you two meet, it, it could be a variety of different scenarios. But the, like, I feel like the way you two meet, it, the, the, the initial attraction is going to be established and there's going to be a sense of familiarity. Like I know you somewhere. Well, you do just because y'all have had some, probably multiple past lives. How many of these are filled in? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Another thing about me, I'm bad at math also. Fuck math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, maybe you've had ten past lives of this person or something like that. Um, <laughs> math is important. I just not fond of her. Anyway, we are going to look at this card next, and this is going to represent your soulmate. So your soulmate is being represented by the moon. So they could be a Pisces or have Pisces placements. I'm hearing specifically Pisces Venus, um, but they don't have to be a Pisces. The biggest thing is that I'm getting here is that maybe, maybe your soulmate is this like if that scenario about one person viewing one person as above you, maybe that's your soulmate. And so this is kind of representative of the fear or the uncertainty you feel towards them. 
this is definitely somebody that you have insane an insane depth of emotion with and there's definitely like I said that familiarity and something that you can't quite put your finger on but this person is somebody that's very deep um and they don't necessarily show that to everyone they could be a bit uh, a bit of an introvert or just isolate themselves a lot they could have issues with like addictive tendencies or escapist tendencies i feel like you could as well so maybe that's something that you both help each other with um they're highly intuitive and they could even do like tarot or something like that um they could have a lot of psychic abilities they could be a night owl as well or they could just be very dreamy and very ethereal like i'm even thinking specifically like maybe they're a cancer rising they could definitely have water placements or you might view them as kind of emotional or something like that. I almost sense a little bit of fear though. Like you like you're like you're afraid of who this person might truly be or or what the significance is here. With the moon there might be confusion or like an uncertainty of of what their role is and what this will be. But I think overall this person is going to to have a lot of depth to them and lots of layers that you're going to uncover. They might be affected by moon phases even, but I think one thing's for sure is that they're going to feel this connection just as much as you will. And they are they might be afraid of it, so maybe that's why they, they're off-putting or maybe you're, you'll be afraid of it, um, which is why you fear them at first. Like maybe if they're the one pursuing you, you're like, I don't know how I feel about you. I feel weird feelings. And I think it's all this past residual energy. But with this moon here, I really, really think that this, this person is going to be mysterious, enigmatic, if you will. And they are, you're not, you're not going to fully understand them when you first meet them. And I feel like you, you, as this re relationship progresses, you are just going to learn more and more about them as time goes on. So with this card, I want to see how your soulmate perceives you or will perceive you. So they might not see you like this now or this might be in the future, but how they see you is represented by the King of Pentacles. So you could be you could identify as the man or have very masculine energy. You certainly don't have to. Um, but if you are asking about like a feminine and you're masculine, they definitely like see you as somebody very masculine, very um, embodying a lot of those like masculine traits. You could be that or maybe you just have a lot of like masculine energy. You certainly don't have to because this is a, a general reading. Um, not all of the energies will always be like spot on, but the core the core things that this person is going to perceive about you or will is that they're going to see you as somebody very solid you could be an earth sign or have earth placement so um capricorn virgo taurus you could be financially better off than they are or maybe you're like an entrepreneur or really focused on your on your on your bag or like you're just very responsible and committed to your job they see you as somebody reliable somebody protective, somebody that they feel safe with, um, somebody that they want to grow old with, and somebody that they feel like they can build a life with, somebody solid, like life partner type energy. Dogs could be significant or wolves could be significant. We have two wolves in the moon and then we have this dog that looks like a wolf in the King of Pentacles. So um, they might really love, like if you have dogs, they might really love your dogs or um, you might get a dog with this person. You might already have a dog with this person. Something like that. But there's also something just very comforting and very nurturing about your energy. Like they feel at peace with you and they and they feel at home. And I think that's why there there's so much growth that happens here. Because I feel like the, these are two people, while they, they might not really initially understand one another. Or they might not, um, things might start rocky or things might, or there might be ups and downs. 
you both are going to be really proud of how far you've come in terms of like understanding one another. Like I almost see this King of Pentacles starting out as a page of cups and like growing, you know what I mean? Like if you're the page of cups, for example, um, like somebody that I, I feel like your soulmate sees you as somebody worthy of growing old with. They see you as somebody that they can rely on somebody that, that keeps them grounded, that makes them feel safe, that they feel like protected by. Um, and even if you're feminine or very, very feminine, they, they just feel that safety with you and your soulmate likes that they, um, or will like that they can, um, just feel zero limitations around you. Like you both are going to be very, um, nurturing towards one another and very understanding of one another. And I think that's why you're going to grow so much together is because there's not going to be judgment here. And, and I think that you both actually have a lot of very similar experiences and similar lessons that you're going to learn before you're together. And, and I feel like you guys will be shocked at, at how, um, how deep your connection runs because I feel like you guys are going to get past life readings and stuff like there's going to be a lot of interesting things that happen and a lot of interesting things that you're going to learn about your spiritual side and about this connection um, once you're together and like fully with this person but the way that they see you as is somebody very responsible very committed um, maybe even a workaholic somebody that can get their shit done somebody that's mature or maybe not always mature or maturing you know what I mean? Like maybe they, maybe, maybe they will grow to see you as mature if it started out as like a page situation. Um, but yeah, this person see, thinks very highly of you. If you, you already know who this person is, even if this is a connection separation, your soulmate thinks of you as very highly of you and like vice versa. A lot of this feels mutual, but, <laughs> um, yeah, with the take the king as, um, not an ind indicator of gender but just a very evolved earthly level so this is so they'll see you as very grounded very um very responsible very committed they can rely on you and they can they know what they're gonna get with you out of, through time maybe not right now but they will okay so we're gonna look at your soul contract and see why you two are together so to start we have the emperor we have the star, we have the four of swords, and we have the devil. So once again, this is a lot about healing. This is a lot about soul work. We have Aries, Aquarius, and Capricorn here. And I think that this connection is meant to help you both stand in your power and feel more in control. I feel a lot of solar plexus energy with this. Um, I feel like you, and isn't, I'm pretty sure this, this symbolism is also Egyptian or like it, it's in a lot of Egyptian symbols, this like, this cross thing. I know it has a name, but I can never remember it. Like I'm hearing the eye of Horus, but I don't think that's what that is. But I, I know that this symbolism is shown a lot in, I'm sure, I'm sure my Egypt people will correct me in the comments or people that know a lot about like Egyptian, ancient Egyptian culture. With the star, this is, this connection is meant to give you hope again, to believe in life again. Like you might be at a very low point and maybe, maybe you two don't take this connection seriously at first, or maybe, um, one person doesn't. There's a lot of different possibilities, but I feel like this connection is meant to give you both hope to help you both dream and 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 work towards the future. You both are meant to to do a lot in terms of your career, whether that's starting a business or climbing to the top of an existing business or um, mastering some type of skill. It kind of seems like you both are meant to 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 give each other the support that you need to achieve your dreams and accomplish really big goals. Maybe in the past, you both have been guilty of not standing in your power or feeling out of control. I feel like this connection is meant to help you both 
stand in your power and gain control of yourself and, and what you want and of life. You're going to feel more grounded and you're going to feel like you have a sense of direction. And with this star card, you know, maybe, maybe one or both of you has like a following or um, rises to prominence in some way. And so I feel like this person or you will be kind of their like saving grace in that sense. Um, if not, I feel like you both will just, there's something almost, I'm having a hard time talking about this connection because I feel like there's such a range of varieties, but also with these major cards, I feel like there are no words to describe how insane this is. Like I often think about spirituality and, and the universe and I think about it from the context that I'll just never fully be able to understand it. And I accept that. Like if like imagine there's a butterfly on my hand right now. And I just said to the butterfly, look, butterfly, you're a butterfly. And, you know, you were a caterpillar once. And I just explained life to them or I explained how cars work to them. The butterfly would have no fucking clue what I was talking about because it's a butterfly. And it was probably be like, I want to go back outside to get me off of your hand. And I kind of view that as how the universe is to us. Like we're the butterfly and, and we just can't ever comprehend such big topics at, 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 we will never fully be able to understand like divine connections in the universe. And so I feel like there's just some of it that's unspoken and left to be discovered. And I feel like sometimes, I guess my point of saying all that was like, I feel like I can't, like my words cannot do justice to how, empowering this connection will be and how worthwhile it will be with the four of swords i feel like there's going to be a lot of healing here and you both are meant to overcome a lot of inner demons together and move forward with this joint vision of hope like there's two cups like flowing on this star and i feel like that's your love for one another and like that's what's going to keep you moving forward that's what's going to keep you having hope like keep you hopeful about life and I feel like you are going to be each other's respite. You're, you're going to be each other's um, safe space. Like you're going to be one another's home. And at the same time, you both are going to challenge one another. You're going to push one another. And like you're going to be real genuine partners. And you're going to be tethered together and, and not afraid to have fun and, and, and do crazy wild things. Like maybe you, like I could even see you doing like, I'm not endorsing this. I'm just saying I could see you doing like psychedelics with this person or just crazy fun stuff. And, and at the same time, working really hard and, and creating a life together. You know, this is a good mix of, of fun and play. And I think that this connection is going to open your, your mind up to spirituality as well as theirs. It's going to open your mind up to what you think is real and what you know is real. It's going to make you feel a lot more in control and a lot safer in taking risks and being bold and understanding your sense of purpose. But there's a massive healing element to it where you both are, you're not going to complete each other. You're going to help one another heal and be whole on your own, but at the same time, strengthen that bond because you're you're healing together and i think that's a beautiful thing you know the the phrase is said a lot like how can you love somebody else if you don't love yourself and like there is some truth to it but at the same time like you don't have to be fully healed to be in a relationship to be with somebody and so i feel like this is this is an excellent example of a connection where you are meant to heal with somebody and grow together and have this mutual acknowledgement that neither of you are perfect and neither of you have life figured out and neither of you are fully understand what's going on but you're both committed to helping one another become this emperor of your own lives and and at the same time you know create this empire together and overcome the things that hold you back the things that make you self-sabotage and things of that nature and i think that this is just you are going to see the world and in, in one another and and think so highly of one another and i think stargazing could be like a special thing here or maybe like constellations like i could almost see this person or you giving them a gift of like like a, a, a 
a constellation type gift or something astrology related like maybe you're very compatible astrologically speaking or maybe um this connection was just written in the stars something like that but yeah this is this is a connection that this is definitely not your first go around and I think that you both have progressed together and there's this deep knowing in both of your souls that you're meant to continue doing that and you're meant to keep meant to continue to keep evolving and healing and and do that soul work and I think that your most important soul work is going to be done together and I think that that is what is going to give you both the most healing and and I think that the the most substantial healing you will do is together but I think that you know you might heal apart before you do together if that makes sense so now we are going to look at messages from them and what they want to say to you so if you haven't met this person yet it's from their higher self um but obviously if you have met them this is just kind of what they want you to know or what they would tell you if maybe they they're too afraid to say these things just whatever they want you to know so to start we have the six of swords we have the five of pentacles we have the two of swords we have the ten of swords and finally we have the death card so scorpio energy for sure so it's these cards that actually make me feel like for a lot of you you might know who this person is but you might not be in contact with them regularly or you might be separated or or it's like long distance it doesn't have to be these things but the biggest message that I'm getting is <sighs> how much this person misses you. And if you haven't met this person yet, it would make sense that they miss you because they've been with you before, maybe not in this lifetime. And like with this death card, it's like they haven't, maybe they haven't seen you since their last lifetime and they, and they really miss you a lot. I get a lot of anxiety with these cards. If this is long distance, I feel like this person worries a lot if this connection will stand the test of time. They really want change. Snakes could be significant to this connection. You know, snakes are really indicative of transformation, of shedding skin, and that's what soul work is all about. And if something ended here, like if this is a separation type of situation, this person really wants a rebirth. They want change. And I feel like this is going to happen if this is your soulmate. They want to move to calmer waters. But with that six of swords as well, I feel like you've helped them. If you're already with this person, they've really helped you move forward. Really helped them move forward from a lot of difficult times. And they feel so much more at peace than they once did. And like this five of coins energy is like for richer or for poorer. Like they 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 don't sometimes they don't even understand why why things happen in this connection, but they're just trying to follow their intuition and like this is ride or die energy. For some reason I'm getting the imagery if you watch Naruto, I think it's part of the Akatsuki, I think his name is Daidera. I could be wrong though. I'm not a huge anime person. I just know a little bit. So maybe that has some significance. But I feel like with this Ten of Swords, if there's been some kind of ending, they really want a rebirth here. They really want change. And they might really worry about this connection and they might worry that they may never meet you or they may never see you again. Because if this is in separation, they miss you a lot. And I feel like that is the message that's being pounded into me the hardest that's what she said ew okay not like that but like maybe that's something that they want but or okay I'm just my guys need to chill your guys need to chill your soulmate needs to chill <laughs> um but I think if there's any hardships that this connection faces you both will move forward together and you will be stronger for it and not everything makes sense right now. And I feel like they're saying that's okay. And this t the tough shit that you're going through right now. There are brighter days ahead. Much brighter days ahead. And I feel like, you know, there's this blindfold on the skull. And, and I think that, that your psychic abilities are being 
stressed here. Like, you have to trust your intuition when it comes to this connection. Not, not what you can see, not what other people say. You know, actions lie, words lie, but energy doesn't lie. And if there's been some type of ending, maybe this person ended it, maybe you ended it. There might be fears on both ends about this coming back together. But I feel like what this person wants you to know is that they are not the same after meeting you and they'll never be the same. And that goes for no matter where this connection is. This is Scorpio energy. This is the eighth house. This is transformation. This is endings and beginnings. And that's what soul work is really all about. And I think that forgiveness and compassion are huge things here. If you know this person, they miss the hell out of you. They miss you so much. Like I could totally see this being like a long distance connection and you're like not able to see them and they just miss you all the time. Or this is something where maybe I, I just heard started from the bottom, now we're here. So if you've been with this person for a long time, maybe they're acknowledging how far, how, how much you both have overcome together and, and how much has changed and how they love the life that you've created. But I feel like the biggest thing I'm getting is for my peeps and separation that, you know, this person worries about this connection just as much as you do. They stress about this connection just as much as you do. They're afraid that it's over. They want change. I feel like they're they're finishing a cycle right now and they want to move forward because they miss you a lot. But for those of you who haven't met this person yet, they might be going through a rough time right now. And they might be feeling really hurt and they're just ready for change. And I feel like their soul misses you. They might not know that it's you, but their soul is yearning for something that they don't know what it is. And you know, the phrase till death do us part, if you're with this person, I feel like they're definitely like, um, you're going to be with me until I'm in my cold, cold grave. But that, that, that's kind of grim to think about. So, um, if you're, if you haven't met this person yet, you know, maybe after, they haven't seen you since last lifetime. So they're like thinking about that, but obviously not cognitively being like, ah, oh, I wish I could see my soulmate. I haven't seen them since 1864 when we were working at that flour mill. Like probably not, but they, they, they might just have this weird yearning for something that feels like home, but they don't know what that is yet. And they just feel like they're missing something and they're overthinking it and they might be worried about it. But I feel like if there's a tough cycle that you've been going through with this person or have been going through away from this person, it's nearing to an end and you both want change. And I feel like the more you change and the more you allow yourself to transform and grow, the more this will be moved along is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. So take those messages, how they resonate. Um, they're, they're a bit different for everybody, but I'm going to go ahead and get some advice for you guys about this connection. Maybe you don't need it, but if not, at least it's here. So spirit, what would you say to pile three? What advice do you have for pile three when it comes to connections or this connection in particular? Okay, so we have sensuality and self-worth. So sensuality says, embracing sensuality doesn't necessarily mean you're a middle-aged swinger. It simply means you're savoring one of the coolest aspects of being alive, sensory input. Also, there's nothing wrong with being a middle-aged swinger, like live your life, queens and kings. Sensory input. It's time to get decadent and reward yourself with gifts for the senses. You could drop a lot of cash on champagne and chocolate, or you could tune in and enjoy the incredible gifts around you. The taste of an orange, the sounds of the forest, the texture of corduroy, I don't know what your life. The point is, it's time to savor whatever your senses can grab hold of, even if that means you're being sensual. Gross. And then we have self-worth. I cast off all concerns about what people think of me. I know I'm a totally kick-ass person and my kick-assness can never be diminished by rejection. So people can think what they think and feel what they feel. In the meantime, I'll just keep on knowing what I know without thinking about what they are thinking about what I already know, I think. And yeah, I think that's one thing that, you, that you're really learning from this connection is self-worth and, and, and how valuable you are. And I think that in of itself is, is a death, is a transformation to just realize how whole you are and, and how special you are. And, and, and it might take you being with another person to truly see it, but I feel like spirit wants you to be able to see 
your worth on your own before you're committed to this person. So that might be not for all of you, but that is a message that I am getting. But there, there's something incredibly transformative about this. And like, this is like, I'm hearing like rags to riches. Like this is somebody where you could start, you know, from literally the bottom and, and grow. There's definitely going to be a lot of changes here. And I feel like if this connection has a rocky start or a false start or something like that, it will get better in the future. Or if you've been with this person for a long time, you could probably like agree or be like, yeah, it, it maybe it, it was pretty tough in the beginning, but like we've grown so much and it, everything that we've gone through has just been to help us grow even more. And like, and you know, certain things need to happen sometimes in order. Like I was talking to my best friend who I literally consider to be a soulmate. Well, I have two best friends and they are both soulmates of mine. And I was talking to one of them the other day and shout out to Kat. I love her and Grace. I also love her. And anyway, um, Kat and I were talking the other day and we were just talking about like all of the crazy shit that we went through last year and, and how, how brutal it was. And we were just like asking, you know, like, like, or she was talking about how like she didn't understand why a lot of this happened and she was like and then I came to the realization like if xyz hadn't have happened like we wouldn't have become close friends and I was like bro that's true like there's there's silver linings to everything and like we went through a lot of really tough stuff not like in terms of our friendship but just like externally and our, it, it those things brought us a lot closer together and like it just makes me super grateful that I have her as a best friend so you know you never know you never know like why you go through really tough things but there's always typically something really wonderful lying on the other side of a tough lesson so um you might not understand why you go through, through things in the moment but you will understand them in time and you'll be really grateful that you did go through them. So Spirit, what advice do you have for Pile 3 when it comes to this connection? Uh, what do you want them to know? And what advice do you have? Don't let your past hold you back, South Node. Yeah, so if there, are, there if this is, if this connection has had trouble in the past, I feel like Spirit is saying, you know, at some point that will be released that's what soul work is all about it's evolving from the things that we feel pain from the things that hurt and growing and changing and yeah i feel like spirit like the south node's a lot about like karma too and like releasing karma what other advice do you have for pile three spirit we also have you are good enough full moon in Virgo so yeah you could definitely you could have a moon in Virgo I have a Virgo moon and like that shit sucks dude but like at the same time you might be really hard on yourself and you might believe that you're not good enough for certain things and that's why that self-worth card is so important because I think one big karmic thing you're learning about is is self-worth and is knowing that you're good enough and that you are deserving of all these things and I feel like spirit is asking you to release all of these mean things that you might think about yourself or all these beliefs that you don't deserve things because you do and it's time to transform and i feel like this connection can't come to fruition if you if, until I don't, I don't say if i'd say until you start to see the value in yourself or at least see that that you are worthy of these things because clearly your soulmate sees you as worthy and i feel like you need to see yourself as that as well on the back of the deck we have expect powerful change new moon eclipse and underneath that conclusions are within reach so i definitely think i think that's why separation is coming through so strongly because i feel like for a lot of you you might like not be with this person right now or you just feel really connected to them and you don't understand why. I feel like Spirit is saying that you either are going to meet this person soon, you are going to be reunited with this person soon, or if you are with this person, like let's say for a long time, you've been with them for a long time, maybe your relationship is going to, to the next level, maybe you're doing something different or exciting. Um, but yeah, this, this is, this is, a connection about soul work so I mean every day is going to encompass powerful change and you might not see it from a day-to-day -day basis but when you look back and think about where you are a year from now two years from now three years from now you're really going to see how how much you've grown and, and how how much you have evolved and and how much uh ascension and and growth your soul has gone through and that's the whole point of this of this of your this connection is soul growth and so, you know, while this connection isn't always the easiest, 
it's certainly worth it. And, and that doesn't mean that the connection itself is difficult, but you both might go through really difficult things and, and have to, you know, be, be by one another's side for them and support the, them through those things. And that might be really difficult, but you both are going to fight for one another and protect one another. And I think that at the end of the day, this is going to evolve in something, evolve into a connection that's very, very beautiful. And I think that you both are going to be very happy that, 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 that you get to be connected to this person. This is, yeah, this is really beautiful. So pile three, I think I'm going to leave this reading here. Thank you guys so much for watching this all the way through if you did. Um, tell me about, tell me about your best friends in the comments because I told you about mine. Shout out to Grace and Kat. I love them. They're my favorite people. Um, if you enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribed. Thank you so much for 90,000 subscribers. That is so amazing and I can't quite believe it, but I am so grateful and I feel so blessed that I get to read for all of you. Remember your worth and remember how special and important you are because yeah, you got a lot of good shit coming, my dude. You just gotta keep, just gotta keep pushing. But um, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye. Hi there, Pile 4. If you guys chose this last card and this bag of charms and oracles, this is going to be your reading about your soulmate. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the connection as a whole and use the charms and these oracles to give us uh, context about what this connection is like, any signs potentially, um, letters or symbols that are significant to this connection. And then we are going to use the tarot cards to see how you will meet this person or how you met this person, um, what this person is being represented by and um, how they'll see you or how they do see you. And then we're gonna take a look at your soul contract and then we're going to see what they would say to you. So if you haven't met them yet, this will be your higher self and then we will get advice for you. So this is a very long reading. So strap in, get some get some goodies or something, I don't know, um, or, or do whatever you want. But we are just going to go ahead and get into it. So your connection is being represented by the Oracle card, the Seeker. And what's interesting is that when I was shuffling your cards, if you have ever seen High School Musical, which this is really starting me off well, like talking about High School Musical, but the song what I've been looking for that Sharpay and Ryan sing was playing through my head over and over and over. And I hated High School Musical when I was a child and I have not watched it since. So kind of interesting for that to pop out. But with the seeker here, this connection is really cool because there's this childlike sense of wonder attached to it. There's vitality, there's movement, and I feel like these are two souls coming together that are young at heart and, and really try to see the best in people in the world, but probably have been scorned by other people, brutal realities and, and, and tough experiences. And I think that for both people at their cores, they want to see the world in an optimistic viewpoint. And maybe they, they fall away from that from that perspective at times, but this connection is going to help remind them and you that there are beautiful, pure things out there and like that love is real and that beautiful connections are real. This is going to empower you to explore your inner world as well as your external world. This person is gonna help give you the confidence in yourself that you need and vice versa and give you the support that you need as well. Like you both are literally gonna be what you have been looking for. This is really, really beautiful energy, honestly. And I think at its core, this is a connection that stays exciting. It's adventurous, it's fun, it's a good time. It's lighthearted even when you go through tough times. I feel like you both have this desire or this um, natural tendency to find the good in things and laugh at things and find joy. This is somebody that you're going to be able to joke with all the time and just have like funny little inside jokes. Maybe you like the same things or want to travel to the same places, but this is definitely something that your soul 
needs if it doesn't have it already is something that your soul is yearning for and that for this person as well and i feel like when you meet this person or when you finally come together you're just gonna realize like this is what i've been looking for all along so we're gonna start with your oracle cards here and see what else we can get about this connection so to start we have the chalice we have the star is interesting because the star was heavy in the third pile and now it's coming out here we have the owl and fire 17 okay i love this because first of all this connection is going to have a lot of feelings attached to it it's going to be quite passionate it's going to be um you're going to enjoy yourself in the bedroom or out of the bedroom yet you guys are the type of people to be like fuck the bedroom like we're going we're going to the lake or whatever like i mean don't get caught but be free my crazy my crazy kids that are adults not kids oh man i really am just digging myself in a hole here moving on okay um chalice this is all about how mutual these feelings will be like this 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 person is going to be your emotional equal and is going to understand you on an, on an emotional depth that no one has been able to understand you before with this fire card here and 17 um you could be a fire sign or they could be a fire sign aries leo sag um same with Aquarius and the star and with chalice and water so this could be like a water and fire connection cancer Scorpio Pisces but I think that this is this connection the cool thing about fire is that while it destroys everything in its path it lays a foundation for something new and so I think that this fire is really representative of not like of not only how passionate you will feel or do feel towards one another but also how this connection is going to destroy old foundations and destroy the things in your life no longer serving you and and set you up and them up for a new life that you can create together with the owl here there's a lot of wisdom that is going to be explored like inner wisdom you're going to learn a lot of things from this person but also an intellectual and emotional match. And and I think that that's what's really important for both of you because like I think that you will be really attracted to each other with the fire and the star, but at the same time like a pretty face is not what will keep a pretty face is not enough for either of you. You both crave intellectual stimulation and emotional understanding and intuitive awareness and I think that is really what is going to be the best part of this connection is that there's something faded about it there's something deeper about it that maybe neither of you understand but it's like all these combinations come together and it, and at its core it's two best friends just creating a beautiful life together while learning lessons and understanding more about themselves and about the world but also at the same time there's so many deeper things like occurring. Like there's change on all levels, but at, at the same time, you're maintaining this core, um, core belief of having fun and keeping things light. Like you can be serious when you need to be serious, but at the end of the day, you two want to lift each other up, make the world brighter, see the good, be the good that you want to see in the world and, and, and create a life worth living. I'm, Owls could definitely be significant to this connection. Um, this connection could help you gain a higher perspective outside of yourself. I feel like this connection will give you a lot of hope for the future. And there will be a lot of emotional, um, emotional connection here. And at first it might be difficult. Like there might be a lot of passion and that might be what shows. But I definitely think that this is a type of connection where there's something deeper to the passion. It's not lust, it's love, you know what I mean? But we're gonna look at your charms now. 
And I do just want to stress that if you don't see like your initials or their initials in here, or you don't see your signs or their signs, that doesn't mean that they're not there. Um, I don't have like, they could just be extra confirmation or there could be things associated with it. But um, yeah, don't get too, don't get too fixated on, on those. But to start, we have this elephant and it says, be happy. So yeah, I definitely think that, that this is overall a very happy connection, something that you will really you'll really be, you'll, you'll really enjoy being in one another's presence. I'm having trouble talking, which I feel like is probably a symptom of this connection. Um, but you both are going to be able to overcome obstacles together. You both are going to um, look at the bright side and things and and find the silver linings of really tough situations. We also have this relaxing monkey. So I feel like you guys are... Um, going to help one another relieve a lot of anxieties about certain things and you're going to give each other the courage to follow your dreams and I don't know I think you're just going to bring a lot of peace to one another and and kind of quiet those anxious thoughts that you maybe get at times or that they get we also have never never give up so I feel like this is a relationship where neither of you will ever let go of it even if there's ups and there's downs like this person is all neither of you are ever going to give up on one another or this connection no matter what happens here we also have this domino with the number six so maybe pizza is significant or like dominoes or like something like that um the number six is the number of unconditional love and i definitely think that you both will have unconditional love for one another but we also have another happy charm which i love so yeah, I mean, like, you both are going to make one another very, very happy, and I think happiness is going to be a priority between the both of you, because I feel like you both have had connections that were very unhappy, and maybe you associated love and relationships with being unhappy and being unsatisfied, and I feel like this is the connection that's going to change that. We also have the number three, so Pisces energy uh, could be significant, or Aries energy, because they're both in the month of March. Um, March could just be significant or, um, three is a number of divinity. So maybe there's like a three year age gap or, um, there's like, it's just like there with the three, I just get like divinity. So like there's, um, there's divinity around this. There's divinity supporting this and guiding this we also have this duck so i definitely feel like maybe this relationship will transform maybe it starts out rough or it goes through rough times but it transforms into this beautiful swan it just might be a duck right now um other than that maybe this person will help you get your ducks in a row or they'll think you're quacktastic <laughs> um or Maybe they really like quackers, or maybe they really like puns. Why, where's all this black stuff coming from? Why am I, it's like, where's these weird black chips on me? Uh, okay, let's see, moving on. We also have, I love Anna. So maybe you met this person in the fall, or you will meet this person in the fall, or maybe you just enjoy doing like fall activities together. It's almost like you both plant seeds that grow later, or, um, you start out as two little acorns and over time you grow. We also have the letter K and we have the letter D. And then on top of that, we have this cross here. And so I think that this relationship is really going to help you have faith in the divine and faith in love. I feel like at times it might test your faith. And if you haven't met this person yet, you might, you might feel tested with that faith. But um, at the same time, there's this really beautiful like this I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm like pausing so much I'm just trying to get all the information and like I don't want to use the wrong words but like this connection is going to be tested like that's one thing that I'm hearing and like one difficult thing that I think that you, you both are going to experience is that you might not want to address these serious things and like especially if if things occur that are really difficult to deal with um they might want to sweep them under the rug or you might just want to move past things but i think that this connection is really important because it's going to help you 
address things that need to be addressed. It's going to help you go within and, and also be more authentic and be be more willing to face the things that make you uncomfortable or face the things that um, are a little more serious than you'd like. There's a lot of there's a lot of soul growth that's going to come with this pile and I think it's all going to be worth it. But what's beautiful is that you still maintain that that happy childlike energy. We also have Virgo here. So one or both of you could have Virgo placements and we have practical. So maybe you'll struggle with practicality or one of you will be really practical and the other one won't. Or maybe this connection will struggle due to practical reasons. But we also have the Scorpio charm. What is this stuff all over me? I don't know what it is. Um, and on the back of that, we have passionate. And I think that that is very true. There's going to be a lot of passion in this connection. Um, it's going to be a bit intense. And you might at times feel like obsessed with this person or like be obsessive about the connection and things like that. But I think whether you haven't met this person, whether you've met this person, but you're not together you're in separation you know I feel like neither of you are going to give up on this and if you are with this person I think that neither of you are willing to give up on this and you both at the end of the day just want to be happy and I feel like any obstacles you face you will overcome so that's really beautiful and I I definitely I have I have there's a there's a lot of conflicting and kind of intense energy here but it's it's all for a greater and deeper purpose and the lightness that is still associated with with you two like there's this friendship there where you both can just be silly and be goofy and and have fun that I think it is what the what is like the binding glue between the both of you because the both of you need need to be silly to have fun and like and and just feel like you're in the presence of somebody who truly gets you and I think this is what you've been looking for this soulmate is what you've been looking for and what they've been looking for so first we're going to see how you met this person or you will meet this person. And so to start, we have the Knight of Swords. So this could be many different things. With this card, maybe one of you when you met was like avoidant of the other or was like kind of running away from the other. I feel like there was a lot of everything happened really fast like this person could have come out of nowhere or a conversation could have been sparked out of nowhere I feel like the first time you met them maybe you talked a lot or maybe they talked a lot and there was just like not really any lovey-dovey communication but there was um there was just a lot of interest and a lot of back and forth and and this uh, you both were just trying to get to know one another or, or really interested in getting to know one another. I could definitely see this being online for some of you. Um, maybe you met through some type of app or just on social media in general. This could also be like something by chance happening or maybe you were, you were doing some type of activity that was more extreme like motorcycles or something or like motorcycles could have been involved or like sports could have been involved in some way maybe you met them at like a sporting event or like your first date or something was at a sporting event or something like that um it's going to be different for all of you but i think one of the biggest things here is that there was definitely like the first time you met them I don't think either of you had any idea how significant this connection was going to be or when you do meet them you will not understand the depth of this connection at first um it's gonna be a lot all at once and so i feel like you're gonna be trying you're gonna be focused on just trying to talk to them or get to know them or keep up with them or, or um you might be running away from them i don't know so you're not really going to be internalizing like how you feel about them and, and, and what you think about all that. But this card is going to represent your soulmate and qualities about them. And for that, we have the Knight of Wands. So more fire energy here. This person could definitely be an Aries, a Leo, or a Sagittarius. Like I said, they don't have to be, but they could definitely have those placements. This is, like I said, the type of person that likes to have fun. This is somebody that, um, you know, follows the joy, follows the fun, and maybe 
at times just doesn't like to address serious things. Maybe they're avoidant of serious topics, but I definitely think that you meet them in, in, in a fun environment. I think that um, this has kind of some player energy attached to it. So maybe this is uh, typically this person is pretty non-committal or um, not really interested in settling down. They're just, ju they're just following what makes them happy. But at the same time, this is somebody that's very, very um, attracted to you, like immediately, like right away. And they, they can't tell if they, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I just heard they can't tell if they want to be you or be in you. So take that, how that resonates. I'm sure that's not for all of you, but um this person definitely like felt that attraction towards you instantly i feel like maybe they were really intimidated by your light like maybe you were older than them or they could have been older than you but they just could have been less mature and so they could have been kind of intimidated like you could be you could have that like very mature for your age energy where they like felt like they weren't on your level or that they weren't good enough for you um But I definitely think that they, they, they felt the passion from the start and like they were like, I want to get to know Pile 4. And I think that this is somebody that's funny, they're charming, they know how to make you laugh. I feel like they love making you laugh, that's, that's one big thing. They could have a really nice smile or they could love your smile, I, I'm not sure which one that is. but. They could also have like creative passions or like maybe they play the drums or something like that. I feel like this is someone pretty adventurous, pretty pretty active, like maybe not like physically active, but always doing something, always on the go. And like even with always doing something, like they could just be chilling, but they're but they're thinking about things in their head, like they're planning things in their head or they're reading about things. Like this is somebody always following their passions. And so now we are going to look at how they perceive you. Oh my gosh, why can't I stop burping? This is so weird. Um, okay, so you are being represented by the chariot card. So that kind of confirms how I was feeling like your soulmate might see you and, and feel like you are very far above their level. Because there's a level of ambition for to both of you. But what's interesting is that there's two horses, two black horses here, right? And there's only one white horse here. And so I feel like when you meet this person, because a lot of this is like the beginning stages for me, which this could be how it is now, but I really am not getting that vibe. Like I, for a lot of you, I feel like this is what it's going to be like when you meet them. Um, and I feel like the changes, maybe you're still going through those changes, so they can't be shown in the cards or spirits wanting to focus on the beginning of this connection, even if you're already with this person. But like what I'm seeing here is that, you know, this person, your soulmate really struggled or struggles with their shadow side. And I think that they are very afraid of addressing their shadow aspects. And so their shadow side kind of runs wild without them realizing it. And because of that, they follow the fun to try and tame this, this shadow energy within them. And I feel like it's not until they truly connect with you that they realize that there's something deeper than just fun. Because with you, we have a white horse and a black horse. And I think that this really symbolizes how you're a lot more balanced with your light aspects and your shadow aspects. Maybe you don't think that, but this person does. They see you as somebody that's got their shit together and like is ambitious and driven. And I feel like this person is ambitious and driven too, but you just seem to have your shit so much more together. Like you've got a carriage, you've got like, I don't know, blue pants, like you've got everything. And then this person is like, I just got a drum and like a crazy ass horse in the background. Like I, I don't know, maybe I have a motorcycle. Like they just feel like they're not in the same realm as you. Like they see you as the star, honestly. And so with this chariot, you could be a cancer or have cancer energy. You don't have to, but I think they see you as someone very nurturing, somebody very driven, uh, pretty, pretty balanced and pretty like level-headed. Somebody that is 
very sweet I, I i just get this total like just sweet energy from you and how they see you and maybe this person feels like it feels like sometimes that they're not deserving of it or they'll feel like they're not deserving of it um but i think they'll be intimidated by how much more in control you seem to be than they are because despite this person's like carefree chillax attitude i feel like there's a control freak hiding in there that doesn't want to admit like that's part of their shadow and so i feel like they avoid that control freak aspect of themselves by following the fun and just keeping things lighthearted because it's scary to address those big uncomfortable things and so the way they perceive you is that you might actually help them get this shit under control and you might help them progress along on their journey so you might be more spiritually evolved than they are um but i think they're going to really admire you for that and i think that they perceive you as somebody that they want in their future somebody that they they feel driven to have a future with and they really want want that with you they want to move forward with you they see like a life with you they could see you being the mother or father of their children or their fur babies or their plant babies like they see you as somebody that they could settle down with and and move forward with in life like it's really interesting because this knight of swords is like running away but this chariot is charging forward and and like you know the knight's just vibing over here and so i feel like where they might have been fearful and run away from things seeing you face your fears and, and accomplish things helps them be brave enough to do the same you are a really uh, you're like a role model for them which is funny because i feel like for some of you you might be younger than them you certainly don't have to be but no matter what you're a role model for this person and you really make them want to be better and want to do better you're both gaining a lot of wisdom and i feel like you both have claircognizance like you might communicate telepathically without realizing it or um clairvoyance like you might have dreams about one another or something like that or maybe you dream in the same bed and like have the same dream or something but with this cancer energy i feel like there is an intuitive connection here that's just unparalleled and i feel like they like how how sweet you are to people and others and and you really try to have that nurturing cancerian energy about you cancer midheaven is actually something that i'm really seeing here you might have that as your midheaven um or like just a lot of cancer energy that's very that i feel like softens their heart in a way that they don't see a lot because while this person tries to just have fun i feel like this person has seen a lot of dark things experienced a lot of dark things and what they might not realize is how much you've been through as well so maybe that's something you'll learn in time or, or have come or they have come to learn but they might think that that you're very naive and they might not realize at the time just how much you how much you really have overcome because they like I said, they like to see the light side of things. They're not looking for the depths at first. And, and you know, your, your deep Cancerian depths, I mean, like literally you don't have to have any cancer placements, but you just exude that cancer energy. And so that really, that, that, that really tests them, but also intrigues them and, and opens them up, gives them wisdom and gives them hope that there are people like you out there. Like, you like i said with that what i've been looking for energy that that's entirely you so now we are going to look at your soul contract with this person and just kind of see the purpose of this connection and what spirit wants you to know so to start we have the seven of wands we have the chariot again <laughs> we have the two of pentacles and the page of swords so if you end up having children this person that's funny this page of swords was originally on the back of the deck after i drew the two pentacles and i was like i was like i don't know i think maybe i should just i should just let another card pop out and the card that popped out was the page of swords so i was like okay yeah i guess I, this is definitely meant for them so this page could be representative of a child that you may have in the future or currently have if they are an air sign or just really intellectual like one thing that spirit is really stressing to me is how smart the both of you are and it's funny because that's like that's not the first thing that either of you associate yourselves as maybe you do but i think that that 
power is a really big thing here ambition drive leadership those are those are qualities that you guys care about more than intellectual pursuits but it's like you guys are both just like an intellectual equal and so i think you're gonna you're you might have a child one day that is if you don't want that then scrap that but if you do and this is something that you want or you have the, this really smart child as part of your soul contract like maybe this child is meant to go on and do really crazy things so part of your soul contract is being together so that you can have this kid that's going to do something really awesome you know there's layers to it um but with this two of pentacles here i definitely think that there's there's a lot here being stressed about balance because i think that this connection is not going to be easy it is going to face difficulties at times and with the seven of wands i think there's a defensiveness in both of you to not want to be open and to not want to let your guard down because I think you both have been hurt for sure. But I think part of your soul contract, the fact that we have the chariot here, I think that you are meant to help this person get their chariot in order, you know, tame this this shadow side and, and show them the light because they don't, they don't see the light. They see fun. That's what that fire is. They follow the fun, but they don't follow the light because they have a hard time believing that the light exists and you did too but you found the light and you know what that is and that and part of your purpose is helping them find that light and move forward there's a lot about unconditional love here and and creating a life together and moving forward together and with this two of pentacles i feel like you're going to balance each other balance each other out in really wonderful ways and and in terms of like the pentacles I think that one thing that you both will have to overcome or that spirit is kind of stressing is that financial difficulties could be something that holds this connection back or um, practical constraints because we had that Virgo practical energy. That could definitely be something that holds this connection back. But with the page of swords here, I feel like you're both meant to improve your communication and improve your understanding about love and about the world, which is funny because the page of swords is probably the least, if there was a spectrum of all the court cards and on this end was understands love the most and, and is the most evolved in love, we'd probably have the king of cups, king or queen of cups here, right? The very opposite end of that of just like does not absolutely understand anything like it, you might as well be speaking a different language if you're talking about love is the page of swords. He's all the way on the opposite end here. And so I feel like this is meant to help you both learn and understand what authentic relationships are and what soul growth is like you're learning more about spirituality. It's meant to open your brain up to, to things that don't make logical sense because there's a lot about this connection that is not going to make logical sense. And and this connection could definitely face adversity. And I think that you both are kind of meant to fight fight for it in a way. And like the, and that that might not be literally fighting for the connection, but fighting for your growth and for change that helps instigate this connection along. I feel like you both are meant to be fiercely protective of one another and defend one another. But I think that one thing that you both might struggle with, especially in the beginning of this connection, is being able to let your guard down. I feel like you both are going to have your guard up and, and, that's, and that's going to stifle authentic communication and kind of create that fear. And so what spirit really wants for the both of you is to bring this connection into balance and see and, and have one another see, see each other as equals, especially in the physical realm. Because I feel like the physical realm might hold this connection back like one person might feel like they're not worthy or work might get in the way so i think that spirit is um part of this soul contract is to help you both look beyond the physical to see just two humans no matter what socioeconomic class or, or what um what career or where they might be in life as two two souls two souls that recognize each other that want to grow together that feel something really strong for one another and recognize that they're soulmates and and move forward with this shared purpose and maybe the shared purpose there's separate interests for both of you but it's like somehow you both have ventures that you'll connect together like maybe you both are entrepreneurs that do different things but you help each other with your businesses or maybe um 
maybe one of you works and the other one stays at home with kids and so you both create this you both keep a, a family dynamic functioning because one of you is tending to things at home and the other one is you know making money so that you don't starve to death um or another thing like maybe maybe there'll be a mutual sharing of responsibilities in ways that there wasn't in previous connections I feel like there's a lot about equality here and seeing one another as equals because I think that there's a lot of self-worth issues. I think it's interesting because I feel like a lot of you are surprised to be described as the chariot, but you have to remember this is from your soulmate's perspective and you and we always think lower of ourselves than we actually are. And so I feel like this is Spirit's way of saying that you need to think of yourself as highly as other people do because you are the inspiration for this person to get their own chariot and also have your own chariot together and, and move forward and be driven. You know, you're going to have to overcome some defensiveness. And I feel like there could definitely be two fire signs here or two people with a lot of fire placements. And so at times, you know, you might get stubborn and you might, um, you might butt heads or, or be too prideful to admit faults sometimes but I also think that's gonna it's gonna be it's not gonna be something that's like really serious and like toxic it's just gonna be something that's these these are two people that um definitely know how to make up after they fight you can fill in the details but this is meant to let help you let your guard down and and see and realize that you can trust somebody and move forward with a purpose and help you stay balanced in the physical realm i feel like you both have trouble with that and and also be more open to communication and a, potentially there could be um offspring that happens that is very intelligent that also moves forward the purpose of the earth so that's pretty dope um but yeah you're definitely meant to to learn how to communicate better and and gain wisdom from this so now we are going to see what this person would say to you so like i said if you haven't met them this is from your higher self there could be multiple different interpretations and i'm going to do different ones as i go along but let's just see what your soulmate wants to say to you so to start we have the eight of cups we have the king of swords we have the two of swords the Ace of Swords, and the Five of Cups in reverse. What's funny is that I wasn't taking reversals, and I literally, like I told Spirit, I was like, okay, I'm not going to take reversals unless you specifically say, keep that reversed. So when I was shuffling, this very last card I shuffle, it falls on the ground and it's reversed, and I'm like, and they're like, keep that reversed. So I'm like, okay. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, this connection is going to go through hard times every connection does and, and I don't want that to scare you because like every connection does there is no there is no connection in the entire world that is just completely sunshines and rainbows and if it exists um fuck them they don't count like <laughs> honestly if, if 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 they if they have a good happy life and they have no issues at all ever fuck them I don't mean that literally but at the same time like they don't exist so I can say fuck them because they don't exist. Fuck them. That's not the, that's not right. Like everything goes through trials and tribulations, is my point. But I definitely think that when it comes to this soulmate connection, you could there could be like a separation, maybe one of you walks away from this at some point. And if this does happen, I'm not saying it does, but if it does happen, cuz like I said, this is a general reading, it happens differently for everyone. This is essential and it's meant to happen or it was meant to happen because this is the king of swords and this is the page of swords and i feel like your soulmate specifically has a lot of learning to do because i feel like they really process things through their mental body and through their sacral chakra through their through their urges if you will and they don't really process their emotions. They might be really out of touch with their emotions, actually. With this Two of Swords here, they really overthink things. And so this person might, like, with that Knight of Swords, they might... I mean, even though that was about how you met them, they could run away from you. Like, this is, like, kind of runner-chaser energy, you know, that chariot moving forward. But at the same time, like, you're not chasing them. You're just moving forward towards your dreams. They're running away from their truth. And so for some of you, this person could run away 
from this connection. And that might be really hard, but I feel like Spirit is saying not to be upset about that, even though it can be upsetting, because it's really essential. Because this, this, this person right here is pretty stubborn, and they have to come to conclusions themselves. Nobody can tell them. You can tell them the same thing up, down, left, and right, but until they come to that conclusion themselves, they're not going to embody anything. And so this, they are gaining a lot of maturity and they are and they're gaining much needed wisdom through the separations that they can get clarity and they are getting clarity. And I think that spirit is saying that one thing that they are learning is, is how to look at things on the bright side. And that's something that you've helped teach them. So I guess that this is, this is a specific message for those that are in separation that this person is gaining clarity right now and that this was meant to happen. Now, other scenarios of what this could be. If you're with this person and have been with this person, this person wants you to know how much you've helped them overcome and how wise you are and how wise you have helped them to be. They've really blossomed being with you and they trust their intuition a whole lot more than they once did because of you you have really opened up their world to so many different things that they didn't even believe could exist. And I think that you've really helped them see the value in their emotional body and, and understand the wisdom behind spirituality and, and exploring emotions. You turn their frown upside down, like literally, like you, they could be having the shittiest day ever, but if they're able to come home to you, everything's worth it. They have those two cups here. Like they, and they know, like, they know that like anything that happens, at least they can come home and have you. Like you are their saving grace. If you have not met this person yet, this person is saying that they are in a bit of a, like, this is kind of the energy that you should be anticipating when you meet them, because this is kind of giving context for why that is. This person went through a really difficult relationship where they're they're still trying to get over it truthfully. And I think that they are very afraid of emotional connection. They're still trying to get clarity about themselves and about life. And um, they might be very avoidant of feelings, of emotions, of lovey-dovey things. And so kind of what they want you to know is that they are going to want to keep things light and that things might be difficult with them in the beginning and to be patient with them. You know, obviously you still have free will, do whatever you want, but this is kind of them saying like, hey, this is the place I'm in when you meet me. I hope that you can be understanding of that. Um, in terms of any other messages that I'm getting, a lot of this I see as progression for the both of you. There's a lot of tough emotional stuff that you both will overcome and you both will gain insane amounts of wisdom through one another and because of this connection. Like, in, like especially if this is a connection where you um, are disconnected from them for a certain period of time, you're going to do a lot of growing. And I feel like you both are just going to manifest one another back into each other's lives because you know how like absence makes the heart grow fonder? And like you don't know what you have until it's gone. I feel like this is such a peak example of that. And maybe you knew, but this person didn't because, like I said, they're so much more avoidant and they're very fearful. And they, I feel like they, they feel or felt like they can't trust romantic situations because they just end poorly. But I also think that this person is trying to overcome that negativity. And they're, they're kind of seeing clearly. And especially if you're with this person and they're changing, you have been their saving grace. Like the clarity that they've needed to realize that things are a lot better like there there's there's two sides to every coin and you know attitude is important and sometimes i feel like you know your soulmate doesn't always have the best attitude towards things and you're gonna help show them that you know they can change their attitude and that like an optimistic outlook isn't stupid or anything like that but i mean the biggest thing that i'm getting here i feel like this is mutual you both are going to overcome a lot of emotional hardships from your past you both are going to gain immense amounts of wisdom. And I think that the intellectual connection you will both have um, and the wisdom and understanding you will gain from all of your experiences in this connection are going to be so invaluable. And it's actually going to help you with any overthinking tendencies you might have or any tendencies to doubt your gut because this is going to help you 
cut through the, the anxious bullshit that your mind plays when your gut's telling you a different thing. Like your third eye is going to be really open and you're going to learn to trust what your third eye is telling you rather than what you can see clearly because actions lie, words lie, but energy doesn't lie. And with this ace of swords here, you both are just going to be gaining immense amounts of clarity and understanding about yourselves, about this relationship and about the world. And it's in it's in this really goes back to the seeker here with this five of cups in reverse you're going to understand how, yes, there are shitty things that happen, there are sad things that happen, there are terrible things that happen in the world every single day, and, and it's really fucking shitty, and it sucks, but this person is going to be like that solace to you, and, and you to them, and you're really going to be able to come home to one another, and, and support one another, and it's like, even if everything in the world is terrible, and on fire, there's going to be a sanctuary for the two of you once you can be emotionally open and authentic with one another. And so you might have to overcome some, some emotional hurdles in order to get there with that defensiveness of that seven of wands, but it's possible and it's meant to happen. It's part of the soul contract. So anything you both go through, I feel like over time, the more you both communicate authentically and the more that you, um, trust one another and trust in this connection and trust in what your gut is telling you the stronger you two will be for sure um but i'm gonna go ahead and get you guys some advice now so we're gonna start with the affirmators love cards so spirit what advice do you have for pile four when it comes to their soulmate connection what do you want pile four to know okay so we have ownership I take ownership for how I make others feel and I do my part to repair any bridges I might have burned or perhaps even slightly singed. If bridge mending feels impossible, then I can start small. Instead of becoming a bridge architect, maybe I'll just skip the bridge and walk the long way around. Taking ownership is great for burning calories and celebration. When I come across people in happy, healthy relationships, I give jealousy the finger and celebrate their joy. When I do so, I'm rooting for the good guys, which means that I'm a good guy. And that means all of us win. Who wants to celebrate? So yeah, I feel like Spirit is asking you to be optimistic about this connection. But also, you know, if this does go through some rough times, be, you know, be willing to open up and take your part in it and, 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 this is a lot about like teamwork and, and being willing to, to admit your faults and, and so that they can also do the same thing. I feel like you're really going to be a guiding light in this connection. And sometimes this person, I feel like your soulmate has a bit more of like an immature energy while you have a more mature maternal energy to you or just like nurturing energy to you, no matter like what you identify as or what your, um, what your energy mainly is. Um, so I feel like you might lead, have to lead by example sometimes, but spirit is saying that it will be worth it. And, um, it is worth it. Like this connection is worth it. And I think you both know that. And, and at the end of the day, that's what's going to keep you to, to fight for this connection and to fight for what it is that you want. Okay. So I was going to ask spirit what you needed to know, but we just had two cards pop out and I'm feeling called to the back of the deck. Okay. Yeah. So we have a new start is coming, new moon. We have you are good enough, full moon in Virgo. And then we have step out of your comfort zone, north node. So this actually came out, this came out in the first pile. This came out in the third pile. This one's brand new though. And this new moon I think is really important because you could meet this person very soon. You could reconnect with this person very soon or you could have a like if you're with this person already there could be a like an ace of swords moment clarity revitalization of this connection but spirit is saying something is changing within this connection and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone with north node you know this is life purpose this is destiny so i feel like there's a part of this is just destined and it's just simply going to happen whatever is meant to be will be and with this you are good enough full moon in virgo Spirit is asking you to release all the things that you think about yourself that make you unworthy or make you think that you aren't worth this connection or you aren't worth love. The best thing you can do for yourself right now is give yourself that love. If you're, if you haven't met this person yet, or really missing this person or something like that, giving yourself that love will, will help you feel replenished and help you, um, kind of get out of that energy of yearning 
but I feel like spirit is asking you to stop being so critical of yourself because I think one thing that spirit is fearing is that you know this person might definitely make some mistakes in this connection and you might internalize them and think that they're your fault and I feel like spirit is saying that this has nothing to do with you it is all them and like they will learn from those things and they will grow but whatever happens here like you can't internalize other people's actions and take them personally and think they're faults of your character or, or your soul or something no 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 you are good enough and you are so absolutely worthy of love and affection and all of those beautiful things. And I think that spirit wants you to take ownership in your self care and, and show yourself that, and that will help this come along. And maybe you're uncomfortable with self love. And so that's a real step out of your comfort zone and, and care for yourself and show yourself that love, give yourself that cup of love so that you can receive it in the future and give it to others. But I am going to leave this reading here at pile four. Oh, this is a long one. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this all the way through. If you did, definitely let me know down in the comments how this resonates. If you have um, met this person, if you haven't met this person, I I'd love to hear it all. Um, if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you left a like. Um, and if you haven't already and you'd like to, I would love it if you subscribed. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for 90,000 subscribers. That is so insane to me, but I am just so grateful and I feel so lucky that I get to read for you guys. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day or night whenever it is that you're watching this. I hope you enjoyed this reading and I hope you'll come back and see me again soon. Bye! <laughs>